Welcome, Hiller fans, to Hopkinton High School's Chick West Field, Dave Hughes Stadium, where tonight, October 20th, 2017, the Hopkinton Hillers will take on the Holliston Panthers. Hi, my name's Rick Decina with Dandy Don Lehman in the booth. And looks like we got a dandy one going on tonight, Don, with Hollison coming in and what's been on the line over the last few years. Rick, I don't think anything that we're going to say here will hype this game any more than it's already been hyped here um, throughout the weeks, not only us talking about it, but around town. So it's a beautiful night. Um, the crowd is filling in, and I'm looking forward to uh, being a part of this. Yeah, you know, I was in New Jersey this week. They were talking about this game down in New Jersey. There you go. Uh, well, well, maybe not exactly, but I'm sure there was a lot of talk about it in the area. Um, as you go back over time, and I say over time, back to 2008 when it was the last time a Hawkington team beat Holliston over in Holliston. Um, I'd like to call it a rivalry, but the Hammers really put the, 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 the hammer to the nail, and uh, maybe something changes tonight. Well, you know, as a Hiller fan um, and parent over the years, yes, it has been uh, a one-sided rivalry. There's no doubt about it. Holliston has had Hopkinton's number. Um, some of the games here have been closer and more competitive, it seems, over the years. Um, there has been some tough breaks along the line and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, the, this is a good shot tonight that the Green has to, uh, to put, a, put a W on the board. So let, let's set it up. Hopkinton comes in 6-0 and overall, 3-0 and in the TVL large. Hollison comes in 3-2 and overall, 2-1 and in the TVL large. And uh, tonight is a, a TVL championship uh, potentially on the horizon. Yeah, that's another thing that, um, you know, this is a big game, but you have to put it all in context as far as the playoff uh, implications, and we'll get into that afterwards. But the last time the Hillers have won the TVL championship was in 2005. So right now they have a share of it. Um, if they win this game, it will be outright, and that would be a huge win. Likelihood of both of these teams making the playoffs is very good. So it's not like it was four or five years ago that a loss to Holliston would mean the season certainly ends definitely on Thanksgiving. That's not the case. Um, Hopkinton's going to have a playoff game no matter what next week. Holliston should, I would think. I guess we can get into that and how that works afterwards. But uh, it's a big game nevertheless and, and certainly all, uh, huge for Hopkinton. So last week, uh, Hopkinton down at Norton took care of business 27 to nothing. Um, maybe not quite the, the light we've seen um, on offense, but certainly the defense has come to play uh, week in and week out. And Holliston, oddly enough, had a bye uh, last week and uh, had a couple of weeks to prepare for this game. Yeah, Hopkinton uh, took care of business down in Norton, and uh, we can get into the, the Hopkinton defense, which I think is almost getting overshadowed by the, 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 the electric numbers that the offense is putting up. But the defense has just been awesome. And um, as far as a buy from Holliston last week, uh, Rick, I, I don't know what to really say about that. We can um, we can get into that after the national anthem, perhaps. But from what I've heard, yeah, they had a game scheduled with Natick. They took it off the schedule. Um, whether that was ready to get rid of ready for Hopkinton, I don't know. But here's the national anthem. Yeah, we'll come back right after the national anthem.
Wow, huh, Don? Uh, we got the band playing. Love the band. I, I, I heard the uh, the crowd getting into it. My understanding is we have the high school band, the eighth grade band. Everybody's here playing tonight. Man, if you can't get up for this, you, you got, <laughs> you're not a football fan. This is as big as a uh, high school football game that's been around uh, in a few years here, and uh, it, it, it's excited. It's exciting to be part of. No, they're really into it tonight. It looks like a blackout where I see most of the uh, most of the student section wearing black. And uh, it looks like Holliston receives. I think Hopkinton won the toss they and did. elected they, to they uh, defer. They did. And they will kick two. And this is where we can't see very well. I can't see numbers that are deep. You know, we need young spotters up here, Don, to be able to see those uh, those numbers. <laughs> Looks like number six. Number six would be Kevin Quinn. And maybe number nine, number five. Nine, I'm not number sure. nine being Ben Wolf. It drops. They let it drop, and it's picked up. And he cuts to the left side, up the middle. And he's taken down around the 30-yard line where Hollison would take over first and ten. Yeah, he looked like he uh, he let it bounce, bobbled it for a second, and took it up. And Hopkinton had it had it covered. You know, in years past, one thing that is always seems to shine through is Holliston's speed. Um, I think this year Hopkinton has the speed to match them, um, and it certainly looked like that on the first play of the uh, kick return. Yeah, I looked. We might have had the wrong guy. It could have been Jake Armstrong that uh, returned that. I saw a number five get up, but I don't know if he actually had the ball. Don't rely on me with the numbers, Rick. No, I'm. Don't rely on me either. But Hollison comes out in what they call the war set was his wing. And looks like it's offsides already on Holliston. Yeah, the right tackle jumped there, Rick. They, uh, you know, they kind of broke the huddle a little bit strange. They huddle up, don't really huddle up, and then they all broke, and they went up to the line of scrimmage, and it looked like the right tackle was a little quick trying to get his, uh, his reach block there. So that will bring up first and 15 from the 25-yard line. And again, Hollison gets into that. They just bunch up and come out in what they call the war set double wing. And I don't know, somebody took it up the middle quarterback possibly, just reverse and go up the middle? Yeah, it was a quarterback. He faked left and then took it up. They had, it looked like they had the line off balance to the right. Um, early on, 54 looks like a player. 72 looks pretty big. It'll be interesting to see if they flip-flop kids and try and put them to where they're going to run. Yeah, get the matchup they want for the uh, point of attack. Well, look where the... Time, time out. out. Quick time out. Okay. It's a good start. Yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting call by Coach Gerard. To, you know, if they win the toss and they deferred, a lot of times you want the ball, especially though if you're averaging 40 points a game like the Hillers are. Um, but like we had touched on, Rick, the defense has been fantastic. I mean, shutout after shutout after shutout. And <laughs> the, the ones haven't – I haven't seen them give up a touchdown, yeah, I, mean, I don't think. You know, we haven't seen them here at home play anybody no. that's particularly strong. They've had some tougher games on the road with Wayland and uh, Medfield. Yep. Uh, I expect this game to be along those lines a little bit, but we'll, we'll, you know, it's going to play out. And number five, Armstrong, takes it up the left, uh, the right side for about two or three. Yeah, they're staying in the war set, and that was just a little quick pitch, and then he cut it back through the line. And, um, you know, the Hiller defensive line, you got McDonald in there, you got Brown, you got Cousins. They've been solid all year. You got the other Brown uh, on the outside linebacker. You got Luke Deloyal here, number seven. Ionelli is safety. In the middle there, you got Johnny Farina. You got Will Abbott at the other safety. And you got Canal. And I can't see who the other corner is over there. And now they have uh, third down. in the spread, third down and eight, seven. Bad snap, and he's going to run it. He's going to come to the left. Abbott comes up oh. too hard. And he breaks the tackle and gets the first down. That's quarterback Ryan Benko. Looked like almost a, just a, a broken play there. Then he had a guy out front throwing him a block. Hiller's had pursuit. Will, Will came up. Yeah, he and, break, um, didn't look like he broke down, though. Just came he, up a little too hard. He did hard. not break down, Coach. <laughs> he didn't break down at all, actually. And, uh, and that, that cost him the first down here. So here we go. So first, it's first and ten. Yeah, first and ten at the 40. 
three-yard line. I don't, think we're, I don't think we're paying Will to break down there. We're, we're <laughs> paying him to catch touchdowns. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Well, you know, that's the, the – you have speed like that. I mean, yeah. it's, it's easy to get there and, and rely on it. Um, yeah. But technique becomes, uh, you know, you have to have it. Just tackle the legs. Just go down low. You can't tackle shoulder pads. So they run a lot off the right side, whether that's, they think that's a, a weakness of Hawkington or that's their strong side. It seems like they're just running. They've run three plays already to the right, off well, tackle. 54 and 72 look like they have a little bit of size. So And they're going right primarily every time out of the huddle, I believe. And the quarterback sneak again, and it's just driving straight ahead. It's like a little scrum going on. Gets to gets to about the fifty about the fifty yard line where it would be third and about five, third and four. Well, early on, it looks like the strategy for the Panthers is to just kind of grind it out. They know that Hopkinton, you know, they're averaging twenty six points a game, and and Hopkinton's averaging almost forty. So they know that um, Hopkinton's offense is powerful. So this is a way for them to kind of control the ball and. Take some time off the clock. Yeah, you shorten the game and less possessions to the other team's offense. Yep. So it's a wildcat, and we got a, maybe a defensive offside. I don't know. Ooh, flags flying everywhere and close to the first down. But this, there was a flag. I don't know if it was a legal formation, but it was the, as soon as the ball was snapped, it was thrown. Looked like it was two different infractions, yeah, and certainly. I'm not sure which, which either one was. I would say holding maybe one of them. The guy in the. We got. We got defensive. I think I just face saw a defensive mask. offside. Yeah, I saw a face mask too. Two defense, fouls. Defense offside. Offsides. Face, face mask, mask. Defense. Face mask. He pointed. Face mask. <laughs> They're having a discussion. Face mask. We never pointed to the side of the face mask. Oh, it has to be on them. Yep. Personal foul, face mask. Well, at least the official's very demonstrative. We can see what he's what he's calling. Yep, yep. So I, I actually saw the flag thrown right away. It's usually a, a legal formation or an offside. And the face mask came um, during the play. So that's going to set him up around the 30, 34 yard line of Hopkington. A bit, I'm not sure he got the first down, Don, by the he way. Didn't. As that play no, he didn't get the first down. He right. was very close to it. No. Um, so that, that hurts. Um, that's a tough one to take, but hey, you know, strap it up and keep going and Well, you know, the, you know we had them stop third down. Um, it's all right. We got a lot of football here. First and ten. And they stay in that war set. Nice little hesitation. Gets to the outside and picks up about maybe to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, if that. Um, Ian Ellie came up. Luke DeLoya did a great job there holding his edge. Um, the line kind of split it out, uh, spread it out a little bit. That was, um, you know, the Hillers look like they can certainly match the speed here. Yep. Yeah, that was Mikey Nash who ran the ball and he got back to the line of scrimmage. They look like they, they use a little bit of a wildcat out of that formation too, Don. They don't always snap it to the quarterback. Okay, you got 72 and 53 on this side, on the left side now, Rick. Yeah, I think they've been on the left side. No, for the no, most no, part, no. no. Mm, they've been on the right side. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right up the middle. Oh, jeez. And qu quarterback Ryan Benko fakes the jet sweep and takes it straight up the middle. Yeah, they fooled me and the nose guard, Brown. <laughs> <laughs> they can fool you all day long. <laughs> yeah, Brown had him sacked in the back <laughs> backfield. I thought it was a good play. But here we go, third down. Yeah, third and about third and about two. Doesn't look like Hollison's interested in passing at all here. Now they have. And he's they're wide, trips left. Benko fakes it and gets through. And did he oh ball on the ground. I think Hollison has it though. Nobody's really I, I think that's a hold. It looked like Johnny Farina or um, Anthony Farina was being held to me. Right. Fumble on the play, and and, and uh, if I read correctly, oh. the last time Hollison played, they turned the ball over six times at Medfield. Um, so they've been a little loose with the football, and another fumble tonight. It's not a characteristic of Hollison. There, they normally do not beat themselves. You're going to have to go out there and beat them. 
So 6.06 in the first, and Hollison's been on a, a 47-yard drive to this point. And it's a pitch in that war set straight up through the middle and uh, a couple couple of yards maybe. Yeah, we were sta it was stacked up there by Farina, um, number 24, Matt Brown. Yeah, they're going out. They're not huddling. No, they're just running the clock, keeping it loose. The, you know, so you can't. I noticed that the linemen were getting in a line and, and not necessarily getting to the line of scrimmage. So they're in the shotgun. They got trips right. And number 32 is met, met by a few hillers. Number 32 being Dylan Ibbotson. Uh, I don't know, but it was Ibbotson, but it was um, it was definitely uh, it was definitely Anthony Farina, uh, number fifty, and I think you're thinking fifty-two. No, no, no. Uh, Third, I'm talking about the guy. Who oh, ran the okay, ball. okay. Yeah, I don't yeah. even. Do we have an Ibbotson? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> no, Don. My, I'm the play-by-play -play guy. I just call the okay, play. Okay, you're done. All right, you're making. I got you. Oh, that's what it's supposed yeah, to that, go That's here? how it's supposed oh. to work. Yeah, yeah. You add a little color to the thing, and well, yeah. Terosian yeah, needs to yeah, fax yeah, me that yeah, information. Oh, that's all right. It's okay. So we got a third and about eight from the 21 yard line. And then trips right. And he's gonna throw for the first time and got a big rush. And he throws, it's picked. It's intercepted by, I don't know who, but it was picked, tipped on the sideline down at about the 10 yard line. Yeah, that, that's a huge play. Anthony Farina with a pick. Um, it was either tipped by, I want to say it was Canal, but it could have been Connor Hebert, number 23, who looks like he's out there on defense. Um, what a huge play. What a huge play. They had a good rush on there. I think the Brown kid, it looked like, I think it was 45, Matt Brown, um, put pressure on him. He kind of shook that off, rolled outside, threw on the run, and... Um, it was tipped, and then Farina was right there for the opportunistic interception, and Farina had himself a, a drive there. So here we go, Hiller's first and ten. Yeah, that's a that's a huge play in terms of the, a drive stopper, and you get the ball back. So right away they come out in, in the spread them out trips. Empty backfield. Empty backfield. And it's over the head of Ionelli as he came to the sideline. Yeah, Ryan, it looked like they were only rushing um, three, maybe four guys there. Ryan had some time. He kind of rolled out to his right. Um, and, I mean, Ian Ellie was covered. I, I wasn't sure. It didn't look like anybody else was open. So he kind of threw it away. Threw it, they were the only person that could get it would have been uh, Ian Ellie. So second and 10 with 4.03 in the first quarter. The Hillers come up to the line of scrimmage, and now they have... Connor Ebert in the backfield in the pistol formation with uh, trips left and somebody just came in motion and set and Ebert is caught in the backfield maybe lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah he didn't have much of a chance there as soon as he got the ball he had uh, looked like he got pressure from the right side and um, Connor kind of got through that but then there wasn't anywhere to go he barely got back to the line of scrimmage. So, oh, actually, he got three yards. Did? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I'm looking across the field there, yeah, and it's third, third and seven. seven. Okay. So he did a good job doing that. So now Ebert comes out. The lawyer goes in, indicates they might go five wide again here. Linguist, Linguist Ionelli and the lawyer to the right. Abbott in the slot, and he's got somebody on him, and and he goes down. Kelleher goes down by sack at the five yard line. I'm not sure who got him, but well, uh, it's hard to tell. But it, uh, it's coming from that right side, so it was either number I can't fifty-eight or I, I don't know, 53 but it, maybe I don't know. 
I'll tell you, it's coming, it's coming from the same side where they had penetration against Hebert. Um, so that's something to file away for later. And so now we have to punt Kelly from the end zone in a shank, bit of a shank. And, oh, nice bounce, though. Bounces out to about the 41, 42-yard line, so we'll take that. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're more accustomed to, to Brendan punting a little bit better than that. He was backed in his end zone, and, you know, he, that, was a, that was a tough punt, but he, uh, he got a good bounce, and so we're, we have it out to the 40-yard line. Still about a 38, 37 yet net uh, punt, so not a bad punt. Well, I'll tell you, Rick, um, and I, we kind of knew this. I think we touched on it just off air a little bit. The, um, you know, H Holliston is likely not going to let Ryan – stand back there like we've seen yes and and, and bounce and and throw bombs right you know, they're gonna they're gonna pressure them from whether it, if they're able to get pressure from their defensive linemen that could be a problem but if not they will blitz and make ryan make a decision quick and and throw the ball accurately yeah. so yeah we both we know paul athlete the defensive coordinator over there and he's a blitzing kind of guy yeah. and a bad snap and hollison's on the ball but a loss of about 20 Wow, 22 yards on the play. Was that, did that go over his head? No, it went to his left. That's what I thought. It almost looked like he was trying to snap it. You had said that the snap doesn't always, always go, go to the quarterback. quarterback. Perhaps there should have been somebody in motion there because it, it was far to his left. All right, so that sets up second in a long, long ways. It's a huge play right there for the Hillers. Absolutely. And this is, you know, we've seen three plays right now, very uncharacteristic of Holliston, right? They've yep. had the, he had a fumble. An, that they recovered an interception down by the 10-yard line and now a bad snap. All negative plays that we haven't seen all in the first quarter. And I, I'll tell you what, from what I've seen, I haven't seen Kelleher get sacked yet, so that was a first yeah. for me, and I haven't seen him miss too many passes. So <laughs> a lot of firsts here in this game. There were left tackles moving early. Blitz, look at that. Oh, oh, what do we got? We got a flag on the play. I don't know why he got up. He was never, he's saying he was never down. Connor Ebert blitzed off the corner and got him good. Yeah, so, and he, they were holding Connor, too, at the same time. I don't know if he came from the corner. It looked like he came more up the middle. Well, he came, off, he the, he came off the left side and came off the – I think he came off the edge. I don't think he's going to decline the penalty, right? Yeah. Might as well. You, you're you're going to be third yeah. and third – and, Third, and you got to get to Milford for a first down. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I guess I guess so. But also, field position's always big, though, so it wouldn't hurt to move him back 10 yards, but I'd keep him in third and long, I guess. No, he's going to – well, the ball shouldn't – if they decline it, it should be at the original line of scrimmage, right? Yeah, which is the 35. However, they're going to take it. They accepted the penalty. It's second – no, it's not. No, it's third and 21. Third and a long ways. Third and 26. Although, wouldn't they have been better off just declining the penalty? And t well, yeah, they took well, they, the, well, the they sack. Took, it is three. They, they yeah. took the sack. Yeah, you figure he's going to throw it long. You might as well, right? Not going to hurt. So that's an incomplete pass. The pass was intended for number five, Jake Armstrong. And Paulson is going to have to punt. And you had number, you had number two, um, uh, Will Abbott, and you had number eight, uh, Ionelli, back there on the coverage. He was well covered. Just the first, is that their first throw? No, no, they uh, they had a complete third? pass, and then they had an oh, yeah, interception. Yeah. And <laughs> but they, I, I wasn't it. impressed with that throw. I guess that's why I'm asking. Well, he was, I mean, the ball was, it was a decent ball. It was just overthrown. Abbott back to get the punt. And he gets the corner. And nothing. Pretty good discipline on the Hollison side from being able to keep him hemmed in on the sideline. Yep, it was a good punt. And uh, uh, Connor, or um, Will, fielded it cleanly. And there was nowhere to go. Holliston had good coverage on that. And you had... Ryan Benko, the quarterback, punting. That's always something to keep an eye on, mm -hmm. possibly later in the game. So the crowd starts to fill in a little bit. Looks like they're filling in on the Holliston side. Oh, yeah. Holliston travels well. Looks like their student section over there to the left is pretty crowded. Um, both the stands here. Is, all right, it's uh, all full over here, even yeah. down on the, on the hills. Looking good. 
So 54 seconds in the first quarter. Kelleher rolls, and it looked like he wanted to go a little long, but he just puts his head down and gets a couple on a play, maybe. Holliston defense uh, strung that out, number uh, 51. Number five, um, Ryan looked like he had a run pass option there. The pass was covered, so he just kind of, uh, kind of tucked it and got himself a couple yards. Number 51 being uh, for Hollison being David Harding. So it brings up second in about nine. Empty backfield. Abbott and Cooney to the right. Lindquist, I can't see the numbers over there. Quick pass, and it's caught by Matt Lindquist. And he was met by number four, the quarterback, Benkel, who was playing probably safety, I guess. Yeah, that was a nice, uh, that was a nice quick pass by Ryan uh, to Lindquist, and, but it was met very quickly by Halston and uh, brings up a third down here uh, with to start the second quarter. Yeah, so this is something we haven't seen here at uh, the games we have done. We get into the second quarter and it's nothing, nothing, and it's going to be about third and six when we pick up the start of the second quarter. So we go back to 2008, Dawn, last time that the, the Hillers um, have won. Um, Talk a little bit about Todd Kiley, the coach over at Hollison, has a record of 119 and 37. Um, he's been there for, for quite a while, a few Super Bowl championships and whatnot. Um, but it's obvious in this game in the first quarter that maybe not the most talented team he has. Still a very good football team. I don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't throw water on what's going on out there. But, uh, you know, maybe not quite as fast, not quite as big. Um, uh, probably a little tougher to coach when you have to, don't have that quite that outstanding trait in a player. <laughs> the more the more athletes you have, the better coach you are, Rick. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Any coach will tell you that, right? right. The, the players make the coach. Um, but you know, it, it, from year to year, it's it's really it's really hard to say. Um, I mean, that record wise, they're not as good as they have been. And and remind me, I want to get back to that bye week. Okay, we'll get back to that. So it's third and about five. And a shuffle pass to Abbott, and he's got the corner, and he, he gets the first down. He's out to about the 48-yard line. That was a quick shuffle pass. Yeah, it almost looked like it was a fake reverse coming this way, and then they, uh, then they, they, they flipped it to Will, and, uh, and that was a good way. You know, they want to get the ball in Will's hands, and that was a good way. They brought him in motion and flipped it. Yeah, the, 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 the most, as many times as he can touch the ball, is what you want to have, and if he gets if he gets rolling, uh, anything can happen. So he's got an empty backfield. Cooney to our sideline. Ebert jet sweep, and he has to cut it up, and he's tackled at about the 50-yard line by number number 54. Number 54 being Will Saloria, William Saloria. Got a lot of uh, alumni coming back for this game. There's a lot of, uh, you know, former parents of players. I mean, everyone wants to see the Ellers <laughs> win this game tonight, Ricky. <laughs> yeah, there's a little history there for sure. Kelleher in the shotgun. What a surprise. He's rolling to his right. And he is taken down for a loss on the play at about the 49-yard line. Yeah, you, there wasn't much open. They had two receivers in the pattern there. Um, you had, uh, looked like it was Abbott. No, number eight, Ionelli and Abbott. Um, both of them looked to be covered. They had, we had two guys out deep and they had three to four guys covering them. Um, looked like that was another run pass option almost, Rick, that really wasn't open. Yeah, anytime you get outside, you have the option to run, but I don't think, I think it was designed to throw the ball. So again, we've got, uh, Double wide, looks like even in the backfield with Kelleher. And he's gonna get sacked. It's going down again. 
Yeah, they must have somebody over the top of Will Abbott because he was looking to get downfield and he couldn't. Well, they do. They, they have two guys. It uh, looks like they have two back safeties. Um, one is certainly over Abbott, and, you know, who knows, the other one could be watching whoever breaks deep. But what's concerning here um, is the defensive line for Holliston seems to be uh, controlling the offensive line for Hopkinton. Um, the offensive line for Hopkinton has done a great job this year as far as, oh, Will's wide open over here. That was Ionelli waving his or hands. Ionelli, yeah. Oh, great bounce. Kelly had one up in the air, and it should have been caught, but it rolls all the way to the nine-yard line. Terrific bounce, but that, that, that punt has to be caught, uh, Don. Yeah, that was, a, that was a nice punt by Brian, and, and I don't know, this must have been a, um, a mess up on Holliston's part by leaving Ionelli standing out here by himself because Brendan probably could have chucked it over to him and gotten a first down. But um, it was a nice punt, and Holliston did not field it. It was a Hopkinton bounce, and now we've got him pinned back in the, inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, so with 8.20 to go in the second quarter, Holliston will take over at their own... Uh, you're saying the 10-yard. I guess it's the 10-yard line. But anyway, Rick, they, um, you know, Holliston, uh, they're not going to let Ryan bomb us to death, you know, bomb them to death. Um, they're going to put pressure on them, which they've shown they can. You know, I'm just, the offensive line has played so well this year, especially in the pass blocking. Um, that uh, it looks like this is going to be their biggest challenge tonight, playing the Holliston Panthers. So Holliston actually gets out of the war set into the spread, and they'll run out of this pretty pretty often. And was it a jet sweep? Yes, it is. To Ebert made the tackle, but I don't know who was running the ball. Number six. Number six. Number six, Kevin Quinn on the jet sweep taken down by Ebert. Yeah, Connor was very solid over there at his left cornerback spot. Uh, made a nice tackle. He's got to watch that horse collar, though. I almost thought they were going to get him on a – looked like he pulled yeah, him back from it, the back it, it, of was, his shoulder He was pad. on the side of him. It wasn't like he um, was grabbing him from behind, though. I, I, he would just – he did come looked down like he awkward. yanked him he, quick. He, he came down awkward. So they'll set it up, and they're going to spread it out again. Uh, the jet sweep lost, uh, well, I'll call it second and ten. And the quarterback takes it straight up the middle. Banco for about uh, five? Yeah, they did that misdirection that you get out of that war set, um, faked it to the back crossing, and... Uh, they got pretty good yardage here, but we're still uh, third and six inside. Yeah. The, the benefit they're doing with the quarter, having a running quarterback like that is the, you get the extra you get extra blocker, right? And, and, and when you have that jet sweep action, you've got people moving out to cover that. So it widens it a little bit. So having that quarterback run is effective in there. So they're going to throw a quick pass, and it's he, he had him open. He threw it a little low. I think it was number three, Mikey Nash. He had him open in the, in the slant, but uh, just threw it ahead of him and low. Yeah, if he would have hit him in stride, that could have been a big play because he was open. And, uh, you know, it hit, hit him on his, on his hands, but uh, he, he wasn't able to make the play. Oh, a shank punt that's going to land somewhere on the 35-yard line. Oh, that's not exactly what they wanted, but the Hillers are going to be set up in beautiful position at the Holliston 35-yard line. Yeah, that was uh, another, another not good punt that we're seeing here in this game. And, you know, games like this, Rick, it, it's going to come down to special teams. It, yeah. it could come down to, you know, you're 0-0 zero, zero here midway more than midway through the second quarter, and uh, close games always come down to the little things, and that's usually special teams. Special teams, some field position, you know, making a mistake down at the 10-yard line. You, you know, it, right, it, you, you can start looking at these things and they building them up, and you have to have that, you have to capitalize on the opportunities you get, and this is one of those opportunities for Hopkinton. So no empty backfield. Four receivers to the right, and he throws. And Ionelli has the ball, and he's got a first down, and he's out somewhere around the 20-yard line as he reached forward. 
They put Will uh, Abbott in motion there, and he kind of cut across, and then Ionelli cut up underneath him. Ryan had um, time there, and he's very accurate throwing the ball. He has been all year, and he, he put it right on Ionelli's hands in stride, and uh, Michael took it up for a first down. So he must have stepped out of bounds. I saw him reaching down by the 20, but he stepped out around the 23-yard line where it's first and 10, empty backfield. Trips left with stack receivers. Abbott stacked in behind. No, nope, now he's going to go in motion. And he was just looking. Oh, and off. Off Deloya's hands? Yeah, it, it went off Deloya's hands, but it looked like it was not being thrown to him. It was thrown. It was thrown hard, and it. I'm not sure if it was. It was. It was a bad throw, and I, I don't know if, if Luke it was intended for Luke or not. But well, I saw Cameron Lamont giving probably some pleasantries to Mr. Abbott, probably getting some addresses to exchange Christmas yeah, cards, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's all friendly stuff out there. So he trips left. Why, uh, too wide to the right, no one in the backfield. And it's a quick pass to Linquist. And he stacked up at about the 15 yard line. And that's gonna give him about a third and two, third and three. It looks like that uh, Coach Sullivan and Coach Gerard have kind of adjusted a little bit the, uh, to the quick pass. Um, you know, they were getting pressure on Ryan with the five step drops. The last few passes have been just take it and uh, just quick passes, and it seems to be working. So we're going to go with a empty backfield. Trips right, two wide receivers to the left. And they're coming with the blitz, and it's wide open on the middle, and he got the first down. Yes, I'm sure he got the first down. So it's at the 10-yard line. It's going to be first and goal from the 10. You don't see Ryan move, uh, run too often, but when he does, he can. You know, he's quick. Uh, he eluded the tackle there, made a spin move, and uh, and got the first down. So now it's we inside the yep, yeah, we're inside the. Yeah, it's a thing. first and goal. So this is a big series of downs right here. You know, the short the the field shortens up a little bit, so it's a little crowded when you start doing those quick slants and shorter passes here. So we'll see how they. Deal with that. 4.50 to go in the second quarter. Ebert in motion, and it's a fake and a pitch to, and he's going to get in. Will Abbott. That was a, 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 a little shuffle pass to Abbott as he came across. It was the same play, Don, that they ran earlier, only in a different direction. Correct. Yeah, they, they put Will in motion, um, which is great. You know, I, I love to see him moving like that. That's a good way to give him some space. They kind of faked it, flipped it to Will, and uh, there you go, Hillers uh, on the board, 6-0. So at, at 4.41 of the second quarter, the Hillers go up 6 to nothing. Beckley Uka with the extra point try. And it's going to be good. So it's 7-0, the Hillers as we come up field at 4.41 of the second quarter. Well done, you called it, right? The little things, you end up starting to drive in the 35-yard line, that'll do it. That was huge. Uh... That was a huge execution there for the Hillers. They, um... They got the ball, you know, inside, you know, in the 40-yard line, and they, you know, they adjusted their offense. They went to those quick passes that were open. They protected Ryan. He wasn't hit. Boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, okay, 7-0. Uh, lead uh, 441 left in the second quarter. So they call that complimentary football, right? A three and out when you pin them down on a punt. Special teams gets them deep. Defense holds them. Their special teams doesn't come through with, a, with kind of a tough punt, and then you capitalize on offense. Total team effort. And the punt is fielded by, I'm not sure who it was, but he gets it out to about the 24-yard line. Yeah, he was tackled, uh, looked like there, by number nine, Kieran Hur, and uh, 23, uh, Connor Heber. So the ball looks like it's at about the 24-yard line. Hollison will come up. Plenty of time for Hollison to, you know, they, they've proven they can move the ball. They just have to uh, 
They're kind of killing themselves a little bit on the offensive side. Well, they've had some penalties, and they've been putting themselves in uh, third and long situations. Um, I, I think the, the Hiller front seven, which has been strong all year, has more than held its own. Um, they haven't gotten any big chunks of yardage, which has been a problem when you play Holliston in the past. Correct. They'll get big chunks, whether it's on the ground or in the air. Yeah. Uh, and we haven't seen that yet today. So that's credit to the Hopkinton defense. And they're in that war set. And this is the... He's a lefty, lefty, and he throws it, and he's got him. There's your big chunk, Don. It was a half. It was that? It was number three, Mikey Nash. I, I didn't see who he threw it to. Was it number five? Maybe Jake Armstrong who caught it. And if he could have got it a little longer, Don, he might have been gone. Yeah, it was a little underthrown. Um, he, the kid, was streaking. He got behind. Uh, got behind two of the Hopkins defenders, and uh, that was uh, that was a, a pitch pass there. And, and that, you know, that, that, that spark Halston was looking for. Yeah, that was a 33-yard play. And not that they needed to hurry up, but now they can just kind of pound us if they feel like it. And they're in the shotgun with trips to the right, and they run it to, and he's going to get caught from behind. Yeah, Ryan Brown shot through there. Um, uh, he was unblocked. Either he was unblocked or he made a heck of a move at the line of scrimmage, but he was in there quick and uh, had the tackle for loss and put uh, Halston in second and 13 here. Yeah, Dylan Ibbotson was to the left of the quarterback. It was just a straight handoff, and he just he couldn't get going. Brown was right there. Mm -hmm. It looks like Hopkinton's running some stunts here to keep uh, the Panthers off balance offensively. So it's second and about 12, 13. They have trip receivers to the left, and the quarterback, Beacon, gets, gets uh, was held by... Who is it? Ebert get in there again? Yeah, Ryan Benko couldn't uh, couldn't get loose, and it looked like it was Ebert at his feet. Well, you had a bunch of hillers there. That almost looked like it was they were trying to set up a screen, um, just the way the Hiller defensive line got through so quick, and it was just they, they weren't able to do anything and let anything develop, and and that's two negative plays in a row for the Hopkinton D. Which really is, they're showing a lot of speed. I mean, the Hopkins defense looks good. They're getting to it. They're certainly flying to the ball. So it's uh, third and about 15. And three receivers to the left, one to the right. And he's rolling to the right, and it's picked. Uh, almost picked off by Lindquist. So that's an incomplete pass. Uh, that wasn't going to get a first down anyway, but uh, now it's fourth and 15. I, I think you got to punt it, Don. Yeah, Linquist. Um, the quarterback was rolling out there. Linquist got a little bit of depth uh, from his linebacker spot there, and he made a nice play on the ball. He almost had a beautiful one-handed interception there, and we're putting it in fourth down here. But you got to remember, Rick, this didn't the quarterback punt before? Yeah, I mean the he's the he also. is the punter, but I'd be surprised at at 238. You're gonna you're gonna potentially it's 15 yards to get. I mean, not too many plays you can get 15 yards, so. Well, you might as well use him. You got him, right? Paulson takes that timeout. Well, you, you might want to see some. Um, Clock still running, though, on the timeout. And that's fixed. Yeah, so there's. Uh, I, I, yeah, like I said, I'd be surprised if they were to punt the ball fourth and 15. There's no real. There's not too many plays you design to get 15 yards. Well, with two minutes left and knowing Hopkinton's explosive um, capabilities, I, I mean, I would pooch punt it and try and pin him back. But, you know, Coach Kiley, he, he's, he's been in bigger games than this. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he's going to have a plan here. So uh, the Hillers have to be ready for anything. So this is this is high school football, Don. A 48-yard punt is not a pooch punt in high school. Well, good point. <laughs> good point. Good point. <laughs> You still don't want it to go in the no, end zone. No, you don't want it to get in the end zone. But, you know, if you can get it to the 15-yard line, that would be great. You know, he's awful tight. I still think he's going to punt it. And I can't see where it's going. In the lights, and it bounced. Hogman's way goes out around the 19, 20-yard line. Well, at the very least, what they did there, Rick, by lining up in that formation is keep Abbott from fielding the punt. Abbott had to come up and play his safety spot. 
um, which kept him from being able to grab the ball and, and run with it. Unfortunately, the punt didn't go where it needed to go. You want to put no. that in the middle of the field if he's not going to. He ended up getting to the left and it bounced out. You could have kicked it into the end zone and had the same result. You might as well have been better off going for it if with that net <laughs> gain there. But uh, here we go. It'll be interesting to see what uh, uh, Coach Selly has and uh, Coach Gerard have in mind here. Are we going to try and um, score some more points or kind of run probably, it out? You probably get three or four timeouts. You, you, the short passing game has been working. Just stay patient. Get out of your own end first. Stay patient. He was looking for Abbott. Now he's looking for, and it's, ooh, almost. It was good coverage. It was intended for Cooney. And number eight, Brad Seymour was on the coverage. Yeah, he was he was covered pretty well. Cooney made a nice play knocking that ball away there. Um, one thing, you know, they had Abbott in motion there. It looked like Will cut. You know, they. I thought they're gonna. I thought the ref was gonna throw the flag there on illegal motion on Will. Looked like he cut. He, to, he tends to cut up field too up early. Field I've, too seen, early. I've seen that several yeah. times uh, with him. <laughs> it's funny, the, you know, the one guy that probably doesn't need to do that. Right. All right, so we get second and ten with two thirteen to go in the half. We get four receivers to the left, and this is typically a, a set where they try to get. Uh, but it's not. <laughs> it's Kelly run straight up the middle. I was going to say Abbott down the field. Yeah, or they'll run that bunch set in Abbott. They'll kind of put him in that screen, that bubble screen, and use the other three kids to block. But that was a snap to uh, Kelleher, and he took it up off the left side for a nice game. So it's third and about three at the 27-yard line. Uh, the clock running. No, the clock's not running. Yeah, it is. Oh. Uh, at 1.43, say... And they get that bunch formation out here. Now, this is interesting. They only have, I figure they might walk off somebody here, but uh, the number four is not getting deep, and this is the reason why. Kelleher tries to get there, but he doesn't get the first down. He didn't cross the 30-yard line. So now you're going to see Kylie call timeout. Um, no, yeah. I, I, you know, this is if this is a. He did. He can't, can't you see him? He's halfway out of the field. <laughs> Yeah, but he suffers from the same disease I do. He's only five foot seven, five oh. foot six. <laughs> but I could see him. <laughs> I could see him out past the hash mark. So I'm not sure the ref can, but I can. Okay, so it's fourth and one, and the Pillars are going to punt the ball. Kelly's back, and and snap and a kick, and it's uh, it looks like it's. It's a wobbly kick, and he gets a great bounce again. And that's going to die around the 35-yard line. So that's you know, another 36, 37 net punt, Don. That's uh, pretty good. Yeah, well, that's what we've come to expect over the last two years from number 12, Brendan Kelly. He's been um, a very solid punter for them. And, and whether, it's, you know, whether we're punting or they're punting, we're, we're getting the bounces early on, and it's nice to see. So this is interesting. Hollison... It doesn't really look like they're, they're a, a throwing team, per se. And they have, I, what do you think, they have three timeouts maybe? <laughs> Probably. Um, with 1.14 to go in the half. I don't think they're, well, they, you know what, I bet you they base it on the, on the first play. Let's see what you get in the first play, and then you can do whatever you need to do. Well, yeah, I mean, you would figure they have enough timeouts to at least make 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 an attempt here but they need some chunks right now i don't see them running the clock out oh he dropped the ball and he's and he's gonna run he's gonna lose it was a short it was a low snap and he couldn't get the ball and he reached for it and couldn't get it again and that just blew up the play yeah that, that snap was low and that might uh, that might be your answer right there as far as uh, what they're going to do. They took another timeout That's here. That's interesting. I think I'm going to just kind of let it go. But um, you know, he knows he's got to score, right? Yeah, I mean, just as long as you don't have a turnover here, um, you know, he could. Do that. Believe me, they've got a trick play or they've got something up their sleeve that if they think that this is the time to run it, they you know they certainly will. They're not. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, they used a. Trick play last. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, that's not necessarily a trick play. It was just that the quarterback was the running. You know, was that that uh, wildcat type offense, and he threw it. People probably didn't know he was a lefty. You generally don't get those long rollouts to that right. side. 
Uh, I guarantee they'll have more than one trick play in the book. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Well, at least we've had an entertaining game. You know, the last oh, two we it. did were kind of over at this point. I uh, love it. We know the ones are coming back out in the field in the second yeah, half. Yeah, the ones will be back. So two wide receivers to each side. Benko throws, and he's – oh, it's incomplete. Did that – did that hit Nash in the hands? It looked like it was deflected by Farina. Um, that was a dangerous pass. Farina almost got his hands on that and took it to the house if he would have had, a, had one more step. Well, that's why he's wearing number 50, right? right. <laughs> so, okay, so now we got third down here, Rick. I might be looking to use some of my timeouts if I'm Coach Gerard, depending on what happens on this play here. So we got third and about 11. 59 seconds left to go in the half. Pistol formation, trips right. Now he steps off to the left. And he's gonna throw deep down the field. And somebody broke loose, but uh, he couldn't get him. Number, th number three, is that Nash? Number three, it looks like he did have a step there. Um, the pass was overthrown. And uh, that's going to bring up fourth down, and there's still 54 seconds left in the second half. And if we can get the you know, number two can do something with the return here, we might be back in business. So you have uh, fourth and 11, and the kick is to the left. Abbott's going to let it go, and it, go, it dies right around the 30-yard line with 43 seconds to go in the booth. So for those of you who think that uh, you get a hometown uh, discount with the clock, that's not true. There is a, an official in the box that, that takes care of the uh, clock and um, it's not somebody from Hopkinton or anything like that. So you're not gonna get an extra second or two uh, when things like this happen. Now everything's, a, everything's above the- <laughs> Above board, as they above say? Above board over here in Hopkinton. <laughs> Take a step to the east or step to the- <laughs> I don't know what you're getting, but in Hopkinton, everything's above board. <laughs> okay. So that's uh, 43 seconds to go in the half. First and 10. I don't know what we're, what we're waiting for. It must be a TV timeout. They're explaining something to Coach Kiley. And they wind the clock or at least a play clock. Two, rece two receivers to each side. Kelleher back, and he's looking, he's looking deep, and he dumps it off to Abbott, who didn't get much. Nice tackle, that generally doesn't happen often when he's uh, coming underneath. No, that was a nice tackle. Um, I, can't, they, I didn't see who it was, though. Ryan looked, uh, looked, looked deep, everything was covered, and then he kind of checked off to Will coming across the middle, and uh, the kid was running right with him. So the Hillers uh, completed it, and they've, they've kind of shown us what their idea is. They took a timeout, so they're going to try and put some more points on the board here. Yeah, why not? Absolutely. So we have uh, trips to both sides. Uh, uh, Two wide receivers to both sides. Ebert in, he's back to pass, and he's throwing deep, and he's got Cooney down the sideline, but no. Looked like almost a little bit of a reach by number eight for Holliston, Brad Seymour. Yeah, it, 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 was, there was a, it was a good no call. I mean, it, it almost wasn't catchable. Yeah, it wasn't gonna get caught. And, and he, uh, and, and Cooney wasn't open, so uh, there was good coverage there. Um, and now we've got Third down and about uh, six. Third and six. Ryan had some time there. Um, yeah, I saw her. Uh, I don't know if there was anything coming up the middle, but uh, Ebert stepped up as if there was something coming. I didn't. I was watching the ball at that point. So here we are. Same formation. Two receivers to each side. 
And he's looking for Cooney who broke out. And he's got it at the, he's in bounds though, at the 47 yard line of Holliston. That was just a deep out done. It was a deep out. Uh, Cooney ran a nice pattern. Number eight for Holliston came up and made a nice hard tackle inbounds. Brad uh, Seymour. Um, Gerard was right there for the timeout. That could be his last. It's hard to say. I'm, I'm not. Uh, at one point, I was. You know, it's tough to follow these things. So with 22 seconds to go. We got a first and ten at the Holliston 47-yard line. You know the Hopkinton offense is doing a nice job adjusting to what Holliston defense is giving them, and they're taking kind of what uh, what's open. Ryan's being very patient, and they come with a blitz, and you almost could anticipate that coming, and he got out of it, and he's going to get. Oh, he's, he, that was a great play. They brought the blitz, and it looked like he was going. Oh, I see the another timeout by Hawkington. That brings it down to the 29-yard line. He looked like he was almost going to go down, Don. I thought he was going to. Yeah. Oh, you mean on, on the no, blitz? No, no. Yes. I, mean, I mean, not down out. Right. You know, like on, he had to get out of bounds. I meant down on the play. Yeah, on the blitz, he. Uh, it looked like he was. The running back stepped up and made a blocked one of the kids. There was two kids in on the blitz. Ryan made a little twist move, the kind of move I think his old man used to make on the dance floor <laughs> in college. <laughs> and then... Uh, and then uh, he, he, you know, he ran again. He's got a burst of speed, which you don't really realize because you don't see him run. But he had a nice little burst. I thought he was going to try and get out of bounds there, but he kind of turned it up and got another five yards. And yeah, I, at, at it's got to be our last time out there. Yeah, though, right? but at that time, you, it's it's nice to get another five yards, but it's more valuable to get out of bounds at that point. I, I would have gone out without knowing how many timeouts we have. Yeah, probably. But you know, you our, our time seconds. has passed, Rick. Well, our time it has. Passed. It has. It has. I mean, in, in the world of football, you mean? Oh, not, yeah. I mean, yeah. We're not dead. I mean, we're, we're, uh, Still alive. we got a lot of prime left in us in yes, we some do. areas. Yes, we do. So, uh, 13 seconds here. This will be interesting. I, I'd love to know how many timeouts we had. You don't have to get into the end zone. He's, he's looking over the middle, and he's he open. has. He's open. Oh! Oh, Cooney in his hands. out. But I don't know if uh, the... the there was a defender in front of him. He was open. I don't know if it got oh, there, his way. There was a defender in back of him and in front of him, but that, that was a. No, I don't know if the hands got in his way or anything. Well, it wasn't tipped, but it was a, that was a tough. That's a, that's a, that was a great pass, and unfortunately that uh, uh, Shane was not able to haul that in. All right, so we got seven, seven seconds. You know, you if. This got to be the last. You know who called the timeout? <laughs> so we, as we hear the crowd here tonight, Don, you hear the cheerleaders doing their thing, and haven't heard much from the. Uh, although we have the wind, it's pretty breezy out. And we've had the windows shut. Haven't heard much of the uh, student section, but I'm sure they're going. Oh, yeah, it's packed over there. Boy, I'll tell you, Rick, that's, um, that would have been huge right there. That would have been a big one. Ooh. But, hey, you get another chance, maybe two chances to try this. It's only second down. Okay. That's got to be it for timeouts for Hopkins. Oh, I mean, who I knows? Count they five they probably have eight more. <laughs> they get a lot in high school, but I, uh, I, I swear they've had at least four on this drive. Well, this game was moving right along. So regardless, you got to figure this is the last play. It could be. It could have two. And Kelleher back, and he's throwing underneath to, and it's done. That's it. That's it. Ooh. No, he's saying. That was clock. He got. He did get out of bounds. He, uh, they might put one second on well, there. I think he's saying one. I don't know. They might put one second on there. They're going to find out. Hollis is looking, leaving it. I thought it was all. Oh, look at Kylie. <laughs> Kylie's the first one off the field. Oh, my God.
Oh, here comes Gerard. There we go. Okay, they are. It looks like they are sending Holliston back, Rick. And um, we got one second here. You're putting one. He just came to the booth. Put on one. I don't see the field goal kicker. No, you're at the you're at the 11. That would be a, a 7, 30, 20, 30-ish, 30 11. Yeah, uh, 30. 21, 28, maybe? No, nah, it would be a 30, 31-yarder, 30. Well, a snap, 29 yarder. Yeah, snap's 29 only seven, 7 or 8 yards. I don't know. This Pagliuca kid, I, I don't know how long he can kick, but it doesn't look like they're going to try and kick. It looks like they're going to try and uh, make a shot for the end zone. Well, you might see that little shuffle pass. You might see, I don't know what you might see, but anything. Oh, well, Sully's in there. He's in there cooking up something. Um, While we're here, we might as well mention the coaching staff. We have uh, Jim Gerard in his eighth year as a head coach. Dave Swanson, the associate head coach. Dan Sullivan, the offensive coordinator. As you said, cooking it up now. Dan McLean, the defensive coordinator. Ted Rigney, defensive line, offensive line. Jack Flynn, defensive backs, wide receivers. Brandon Anderson, defensive backs, wide receivers. Mark Sanborn, head freshman coach, varsity special teams coordinator. You had Ed Flannery, assistant freshman coach, varsity equipment manager. Mike Webb, assistant freshman coach. And day, game day coordinator, Scotty Mackin. All right, so here we are. This is the last play of the first half. They have two receivers to the right and the left. And Lindquist in motion to the left. They're going right. They're going to try to isolate Abbott. <laughs> and he throws back across, and it's not, no, incomplete. I don't know who that was intended for. Ionelli, possibly. Yeah, that, it, it, yeah, it was intended for Ionelli. Um, Kelleher rolled right. Number 21, Zach Frank threw a heck of a block on the linebacker. He planted him um, to give Ryan Kelleher a couple extra seconds. Ryan threw a good pass, the only place you could throw it, and uh, it looked like it just wasn't enough to, to make, the, uh, make the play. Okay, so that wraps up the first half. The Hillers go into the locker room leading 7 to nothing. We'll be right back for the second half.
Back Hiller fans to the second half where the Hopkinton Hillers lead seven to nothing over the Hollis and Panthers. The one touchdown coming on a Will Abbott shuffle pass from Kelleher at 441 of the first period of the second period uh, to make it seven nothing, and that's our score today, Don. Yeah, it um, this is a uh, uncharacteristically low scoring game. Um, not only for this season, but in years past between these two teams. Um, Holliston came out in the first half in their war set and looked to kind of grind it out. They had a, a long drive that uh, the Hillers ended up getting an interception on. There was a couple, you know, losses and uh, kind of on, there was another turnover in the first half too, wasn't there by Holliston? Uh, they, f they fumbled but recovered it, but right. the interception was the... Uh was the big thing, and they had a, the, the short punt from uh, Hopkins in the short field. Hopkins' defense has been playing really well, ha as they have all season. Um, they look to be fast to the ball. Ha Holliston's um, defensive line looked like they were going to be something to deal with early on. Hall Hopkins' offensive uh, coordinator, Dan Sullivan, looked like he adjusted a little bit to the pressure that they were getting on Kelleher, kind of shortened up the drops and made some quicker passes, and it led to that first touchdown um, from Will Abbott. Hopkins had had another opportunity at the end of the first half, um, but uh, we're not able to get in. Well, we're hoping that uh, this game turns out the way we want it to turn out, and the the football team can join the volleyball team, which beat Norton three nothing today. Uh, win the TVL championship, even though the season's not over. Four years in a row for the volleyball team. Uh, the volleyball team is. Um, is one heck of a program led by Margie Grabmeyer, and uh, they're the defending state champions. This year they've moved up a division, and uh, we'll see how they do in the tournament, but it certainly doesn't look like they have lost a step as a program. We have a floating kick that's hopping. Deloya takes it on the far sideline, then turns it up, gets it to about the 25-yard line. That's where Hopkins will take over first and 10. That was just kind of like a... Uh, a bouncing, uh, really not, wasn't able to give him a, a good return. Um, Hopkinton's kind of uh, pinned back a little deep here, and we'll see uh, We'll see how we can get started. As the second half gets going, I want to just uh, thank the folks that bring you this game. Mike DeRosian, the producer, John Ritz on camera, Denise Antaki on camera, Tom Diggs, the director, that uh, we got the easy job done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. Those guys, especially especially in inclement weather. Mm. 
So we got uh, four receivers to the left. Hoppin is just going to come out and let it go. It's a quick pass to Deloya, and not a lot there. He gets to about to the and I think we got a horse a horse call or something up around the head. Yeah, yeah. He that was a uh, that was a personal foul. The way he tackled him around his head like that. Um, Luke kind of took that bubble screen. Looked like he had a good little burst there. Got about four or five yards, and then he was tackled out of bounds, and that looks like they're going to add another 15. Personal foul on the defense, and that's probably what it is. And he'll add 15 yards, bring it up to about the 45-yard line, somewhere around there. And again, Holliston with a uncharacteristic mistake. We've said that several times through this broadcast. Well, you know, when, you, when you're putting pressure on an opponent, which Hopkinton is, I mean, they are applying pressure defensively and offensively, it's going to lead to some mistakes. And it's just nice to see the green in the driver's seat for once in this matchup. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We have uh, trips. I might even be stacked to the right. Cooney to the left. And Kelleher throws, rolls to the right, and he has... I don't know who it was, somebody trying to, Will Abbott down on the sideline, didn't go out of bounds, came in around the 45-yard line where it's going to be about second and eight. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're trying to get Will deep. You know, they're kind of uh, cutting up across the field, putting patterns in place that will give him a little bit of space. And uh, that was a nice, you know, quick pass, nine-yard gain or seven-yard gain. Yeah, we'll call it second and eight. We'll average it. Second and two. I mean, second and two, eight on the play. And uh, I guess, a, a, like I said, a tight, kind of a tight stack here to the left. And he's rolling to his left, and he wanted to throw, but now he's going to take off. And he's caught from behind, and he gets down to the 35 yard line. Tackled by number 55. And let me find number 55 here. Don, that would be number 55. I gotta find my glasses. Well, I don't know. While you look for your glasses, <laughs> Rick, uh, Ryan did a nice job there. He rolled out to his left. He, you know, he had he had two receivers out in the pattern, uh, with the defenders almost had their back to Ryan, and Ryan just kind of took it up and and ran for a first down. That's what happens when you go man to man. Sometimes you get your back to the quarterback or your back to the backfield. That can happen. Number fifty-five was uh, John Canal. So it's the same formation. Trip stack, and they're going to roll to the right. And throwing deep, he's wide open. Is that Linquist? Matt Linquist down around the 10 yard line for a first down. He was open, Don. He was open. Um, you know, Matt ran a nice pattern there. Ryan, he looks like they're letting him outside of the pocket a little bit to get him out from that pressure that had been coming up the middle. They're putting him on the move. And uh, he had a uh, Zach Front running in front of him, Zach um, Frank running in front of him to, as a protector, and he had plenty of time and threw a, a, an accurate pass. And here we go. That's one of, the, on the uh, move. one of the things they've changed up today. Ebert's playing a lot of defense, and they're giving him some a little bit of a breather offensively. Yeah, we haven't seen Hebert on defense much this year yet. And he's going to roll to his left, and he's throwing to the end zone. He's got. Did he catch that? Did he catch it? They're saying uh, they're no. They're saying no. No catch. I'll tell uh, you. It was close, but it probably did touch the ground. It was close, and I'll tell you what else was close. I thought they could have called interference there. That that defender had his right hand, and he was really giving them the business there. Um, without replay, who in the heck knows, Rick? I, I can't yeah. tell you if it was a catch or not, but it, it was a heck of an effort and a heck of a heck of a pass. Yeah, it was two two officials were there. It wasn't as if they had, they had it on either side. They were talking a little bit. You know so something? It was close. You want to watch here, and I see Hebert just went in. Maybe they bring Frank in as like a, a blocker, because like I had said at the end of the first half, he leveled a linebacker. So maybe they want to bring Frank in as more of a uh, personal protector for, for Kelleher in passing situations. Certainly possible. And they split five wide. Stack formation, Ebert in motion. Takes it, here's that, that pitch, and it was almost broken up. 
No, he stepped out around around the six, around the six yard line. So we're going to have third in about. So he picked up about we'll call it seven on the play to about the six yard line. That was that 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 that. That was a pitch. That that little quick pitch to Will Abbott. So it's third and we'll call it two. And Frank in the backfield, or is that Ebert? It's Ebert in the backfield. He's rolling, he's rolling, he's rolling. He's gonna run, he's gonna run, and he certainly got a first down. He got a first down, I don't know where he is. Yeah, that looked like it was a designed run. Can you see where he's at though? First and goal, looks like it's about one, to two. One or two yard line? Yep. So he picked up above four on the play. So we'll call it first and goal from the two. So this is exactly how you want the half to start, Don. You get the ball, you defer. This is, this is how you envision it. You defer the kickoff. You get it in the second half in a tight game and uh, come down and score. Yeah, they almost used that 15-yard uh, that penalty as a springboard yeah. there. That was on second down and uh, gave him, got him up towards midfield, and now here we go. And it's just, oh, straight ahead. I don't know what happened there, but there was a mad rush from Holliston and the ball. No, it looks like he's down. So... I don't well, know who had the, I don't know if Keller had the ball or, or, or Ebert had the ball, but they, at the mesh point, they got hit. Yeah, um, the, the Hillers were lucky to keep possession on that play. I could tell you one thing, it looked like that the Holliston defensive line had that, the cadence timed. So that might be one thing the Hillers might want to switch up because they were in the backfield as the snap happened. So that's a, that's a loss of, we'll call it three. So it's going to be second and five from the five. 7.31 to go in the third quarter. Pretty impressive drive, as you said, aided by the 15-yard personal foul. It kind of just it kind of got him going. So tight formation. Uh, Abbott can get himself to the corner pretty easily here. I don't know if he's going to go to him, but... Nice def that was a nice defensive play by number three, Mikey <coughs> Nash. And uh, I think you've got to get him deeper and make him come back to that goal line as opposed to stretching it out parallel, uh, Don. Yeah, I would have I would have thrown that more to the back corner of the end zone and trying to throw it, um, you know, because he was covered there. So you almost got to just kind of loop it over that defender. And Ryan was rolling left, but uh, Will was the only – receiver in the pattern so there really wasn't another, any other option to throw that so this is an interesting play right here at third and five you get your whole arsenal available because it's likely a two point uh, two play area they could go for the field goal the way your defense is playing maybe that's not a bad idea So they got tr tight stack trips right, and we're going to have a timeout. White. 20 second timeout. No. Hillers. Well, you know, you, you got five timeouts, Rick. So you, you, here's a situation where this is the second trip inside the red zone, and in as many drives, you've got to make sure that you come out of this with some with some points. And at this point, like I said, you're close enough. You could kick a field goal from here. And the way your defense is playing, it might just be good enough. Well, you know, it looks like 57. I mean, he, he's been very accurate. They've got uh, the long snapper. You do know that long snapper, number 74, Ben Powers, and the holder is uh, Kelleher himself. So they've executed the play. Mm -hmm. And so it's, uh, it's certainly an option. And we will see what happens uh, if they don't convert the touchdown here. So we've got... Uh, Double receivers, that was a quick snap. And he's trying Cooney, and it's knocked away again. That's number, number eight. 
Number eight, Brad Seymour on the defense. So what are we doing here? With, it no, looks they're like kicking a wholesale. It. They're kicking it. It was a, um, yeah, he was covered again. You know, that rolling to his left, that looked like the same type of play they tried to run with uh, Abbott. This again was covered. And, uh, okay, so here we go, field goal. Yeah, and uh, as you said, as, as Kelleher is the, the holder, um, you know, anything can be in play here. Low snap. And it's it's good, I think. It's good. Yep. So Pagliuca with a 20, uh, let's see, it was probably spotted at the 12-yard line, 22-yard field goal at 6.57 of the third quarter. So that brings us to 10 to nothing as we come back upfield. Rick, that was, uh, that was, that's a huge field goal right there. Um, the snap was a little low. Ryan did a nice job getting it up on the tee, and uh, Pagliuca punched it through, uh, which makes this a two-score game now. It certainly does, but you got to think it's a little bit of a moral victory for Holliston in the sense that they get down to the one-yard line and weren't able to punch it in. Well, they've the managed to stay in this game. Um, Holliston is certainly capable of scoring 10 points. We know that. Um, and it was huge from a Hiller standpoint not to come out of there again with a goose egg. You, 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 we couldn't have done that. That could have gotten a little demoralizing if that would have happened. Absolutely. So we come up field with 6.57 to play. Kelly kicks off to, looks like number six, Kevin Quinn. And he gets out to the left side, and he's down the sideline, and he's going to make it to about the 45-yard line. So a terrific return for Holliston. Yeah, that was a good kick by, uh, by Brendan Kelly. And um, the uh, Holliston kid, Grabbed it, took it up, and he broke one tackle in and around the 35-yard line. And once he broke that, he kind of had clear sailing until they tracked him from behind. Yeah, Kelly was still in a good spot to be able to – he, he had him kind of trapped on the sideline, so he wasn't able to cut back in the field. And as you said, he was tracked down from behind. So um, nice play by Holliston to get them to the Hiller side of the field on the kickoff return. Um, Good opportunity for the Hillers defense to remain stout. It'll be, oh, they're coming back out in this war set, so it's not like they're spreading out, looking to panic and start throwing the ball. Well, this is, they had a lot of success with this earlier in the game. And maybe field position has had something to do with it in the sense that, you know, they, they don't feel like they can run it for 90 yards and be successful. But you give me half the field and I can do something, and that's Ricky Nash. Well, Mikey Nash taking it pitch and running the left side for maybe a gain of a yard. Again, the Hiller front seven holding their own. Um, yeah, pick up of two. Anthony Farina scraped off there. It looked like he made the tackle. McDonald Cousins have played well all year. Both Brown boys. You know, everybody, one thing about this defense is they pursue. You know, you don't see kids standing around waiting for somebody to make a play. They all look to make the tackle, and that's huge when you have a, a, on defense. So interesting in the war set, they just moved the the up back to. Oh, there we go. And Movement. that's going to be another one. Boy, you, you didn't have a decent first yard, first down yardage. You only gained two, and now they're going to get pushed back five. It's going to be second and, and three. It looked like Elliott. Scott Elliott moved on that particular play. He's a big dude, so when Let's he moves, that. everybody sees him. Yeah, 6'4", 279. That's a good size to maybe pay attention to him. Well, we <laughs> saw him in the first. Now, he's on the right side now. Remember, I, I had this conspiracy theory that when they yeah. came out, like he, you know, see, now he's on the left side. So maybe they are flip-flopping him. So now they're in the shotgun. Spread him out. And he's going to oh, he's going to run a design roll. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage, where it's going to be third and about ten. That's Benko on the rollout carry left. That almost looked like it was a designed run. Yeah, it yeah. might have been. I don't think anybody was in the pattern did, that I could see. Well, they had trip rec trip receivers to the right, so um, the Hiller defense looking for the crowd to get rolling here. 
Third and a long ways to go, third and 10. This is a big play here, Rick, because yeah. uh, it'll, it'll give Coach Kiley a decision if they don't get, uh, get this. Might be a little early for that decision, but the clock is running down to 4.57 in the third quarter. Trips to the right. Hill is only rushing three. And he throws deep. He's got a man open, and it's going to be a touchdown. Mikey Nash, who cut in on the post pattern. Nice throw by Banco. And now it's 10 to 6. Halston, an impressive, quick, short drive. Uh, piggyback off the nice run back. Yeah, that looked like it was almost the same type of pattern that they missed on in the first half um, that the quarterback kind of overthrew. It looked like he had a step on the. Uh, the Hiller defense, and then that time um, he did have a step on the Hiller defense, and it was a pass that was right on the mark, and now uh, this game is far from over, Rick. No, absolutely. At 439, I can't see the kicker. But Hollison fakes it, and wow, what a push. And that's a that's an interesting call right there. I don't know how it helps you in the sense of two points versus three. I guess you can go for a field goal and win it later in the game. Maybe they don't have a, much of a kicker. You know, it's hard to say. But anyway, that's a two-point conversion is good. Did you, I didn't, have no idea who ran that in. Well, I think I think it was just a direct snap. I think it was to the uh, to the holder. No, it was the up back. It was an up back that, that came in motion. And, and I don't know if he got on the center and then took the ball. But oh, okay. he went straight in. Well, they, 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 had, they had confidence in the play, enough confidence to uh, – you know, to, to run it. And, you know, they must have thought that they must have seen something in film or whatnot and said, this is, if we get this opportunity, this is what we're going to do. I would assume that they would have a kicker. I mean, Halston normally does kick extra points and field goals, um, but we have not seen them, so who knows. Okay, so let's see if the Hillers can, um, Respo can respond. Right, it's a respond time, right, in football? I mean, this is the ebb and flow of a game. Well, they, they call yeah. it Mr. Mo, right? The momentum. The Hillers have not. Um, Bit of a pooch kick here, and Abbott has it, and he's swallowed up somewhere around the around the 32-yard line. I wouldn't say a pooch kick, but it certainly didn't go deep in the in the middle of the field. No, it was it was fieldable. Will took it up. Um, Halston seems to have some. Some speed on their special teams. They're getting down there and covering them. I mean, there's not a lot of space once Will gets his hands on the ball. Yeah, I can't imagine that was by design to get it to number two. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't know if you want to kick off to. I would be to, kicking away uh, from yeah, it. to let it get to number two's hands. But uh, anyway, uh, Hopkinton gets the ball at the 32-yard line. Where they'll start first and 10, 420 left in the third quarter. And they have this double stack receivers fairly tight. Kelleher rolls to his right, and he throws a wobbler, and it's caught. Caught by, Lin Lin no, not Lindquist. Yeah, that's Lindquist. Ionelli. Is that no, it's Ionelli on the catch. Yeah, Michael did a nice job there. That looked like it came off. That was, uh, here we go. Frank was in, so, yeah, they had that rollout, and uh, Ryan had plenty of time. It just looked like it came off his hand a little funny. It was a flutterer, which he normally does not throw. Um, Ionelli did a nice job there of grabbing that ball at its highest point yeah, and making that catch. for sure. Landed on his back. Yep, that was a nice catch. So a 13-yard gain in the play brings it to the 46-yard line. Allison a little confused. And Hebert comes in jet sweep. And he stiff arms the, the uh, stiff arm number 11 from Holliston, Henry Naughton, and picked up another... Uh, he was right around the line of scrimmage when he did that. Yeah, that was well covered. Number 11 had that well covered. He looked like he had the speed to make the play. He came in high, and that's not how you tackle. And Connor just gave him the old stiff arm and grabbed another five yards off of it. Don, that was my high school high school number at uh, Hollis, and number 11, and probably went to my tackling school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he, uh, you got to tackle the legs, Rick. <laughs> anyway, so it's uh, four receivers to the right. Deloy is back. Um, he almost did a bubble as if he was going to be able to throw the ball. Look at your face mask. But Deloya picks up uh, about seven on the play for a first down. And Hill is somewhere around the 39, 40-yard line of Holliston. 
41 yard line. The Hiller offense uh, seems to be in a groove here where they are, um, you know, really moving the ball well. They have not been stopped at all the last two or three year drives that they've had. Well, I will tell you this um, I was told that Deloya threw a pass. Was it Deloya or, or Abbott threw a pass in Whalen? So they, it was Abbott. So they know that that, that plays in our arsenal. That's the Abbott. And he almost got loose, picks up about two. Yeah, about two or three. That was a bubble screen. He kind of cut through. Um, Holliston made a nice job, uh, made, made a nice open field tackle there in the middle of the field. Well, I mean, as we've seen in past games that, you know, whether teams, you know, <laughs> wanted to go one-on-one -on -one with Will Abbott or they just didn't have anybody to cover him. He was running loose. Holliston's not letting that happen. Tight trips to the right. Quick pitch over to Hebert. He's trying to get the corner, and he gets about a yard. So it's going to be third and about seven or seven-ish. All right, big play. Yeah, it looked like uh, Holliston had that well covered. Um, Connor didn't have a lot of room to run. You know, it's going to – Holliston's quick too, so it's going to be difficult to kind of outrun them to the corner. And uh, Connor was not able to get much there, so I would expect to see uh, a throw here, Rick. So it's third and seven, 241 in the third quarter. The Hillers up 10 to eight. Kelleher's got Frank in the backfield with him. And he's looking deep, and it's going to be overthrown. His uh, double coverage to Cooney. So that's going to be bring up a fourth down, fourth and seven. Well, Rick, if there's any indication, and I think we kind of knew it going in, I mean, right there we had three guys in the pattern going deep, and I'm count I counted five, 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 five defenders back there. So, the, you know, they, they, have got two the guys, they have two guys over the top no matter what. The other guys right. are running with them. Yeah, two guys over the top. So it's going to be difficult to, you know, execute that bomb, um, that bomb play. Well, what do you think here? Fourth and seven from the 38-yard 30, line. This is why they give the head coach the big bucks, right? Yeah. Make I, the call. Yeah, this is an interesting call here. Looks like yeah, you got Frank in there, so I'm expecting a rollout type of deal. And he's looking, he's looking, he's looking. He's going to run. He's going to he get it. it. He's going to get it. Well, look, th this certainly was a an adjustment by the Hillers, um, at least coming in here, knowing that Holliston was going to be playing man. They are going to, you know, have the guys turning and running with our fast receivers, and they're telling Keller, hey, man, take the ball and run with it, and he's doing that. So he picked up about 11 on the play. It brings us to the 25-yard line. 25-yard line of Holliston, 217 to go. He was tackled out of bounds. So they got trips stacked to the left. Frank still in the backfield with Kelleher. And he's gonna get Oh, he's got loose. I thought I thought the pursuit from the backside was gonna be able to catch him, and I don't know where he went, but it uh Kelleher just stopped and went upfield. It almost looked like he had eyes in the back of his head because it was stopped, and then he he, ha he had the wherewithal to feel the pressure. Is he banged up here? It looked uh -huh. like he had to feel the pressure, uh, and he kind of ducked out and made something positive on what could have been something very negative. Yeah, Holliston is number 11. Henry Naughton uh, almost looked like he lost track of him somehow. He was coming from the backside and, and didn't make the play. So second and one, um, it gives you a lot of options, Rick. You know, you've got it looks like it's second and less than one, actually. So we're gonna we're gonna go back actually and talk about this a little bit. A fourth and seven call, late in the third quarter. That's well, I mean that's that that you know what that shows that hey, coach is here to win the game. Um, he's not playing it safe. He said you know he's figuring hey, I got these weapons, I might as well use them. And he put the ball in Kelleher's hands. He said, make a play, and Ryan did, and he did it with his feet. So the ball's in the, on the 15-yard line, right on the 15-yard line. 
and it's short yardage. Second and less than one, Kelleher's got the play. Did we call timeout on that? Is there a timeout uh, on this? I don't, I don't Seems know. Seems like an awful long time of development here. <laughs> Kelleher rolls and he sets his feet. Nope, nope, he brings it down. I don't know if he got the first down. I think he's short of the first down. Yeah, there was definitely lost some yardage there. The Holliston defensive line had some pressure um, and really didn't give Ryan any time to make any decisions there. And uh, he just tried to get it up for, for another yard, but it looks like he ended up losing a yard. So we got third down here. Oh, Hillers, Hillers aren't in, in any hurry, and they, they really shouldn't oh, no. be. No, no, there's no. I mean, you're on the clock all you want being up. Um, Two points, 48 seconds left in the third quarter. Third and two, which you really don't. You don't want to have a negative play here. Well, what are we on here? 16 there. They're inside field goal possession, you would mm, uh, that's, maybe not. That's yeah. close. Right back. And, uh, Abbott in motion is going to. Oh, he threw it into Ooh. the ground. Had big rush from number 54, William Saloria. And uh, he threw that ball into the ground. That was like. Yeah, that was, that was, looked like it was well, well covered too. Um, but it, it wasn't in the ground. It looked like it came off Ryan's hands uh, right after he was getting hit right as, as he was throwing the ball. And it was caused a poor throw. Um, so there's no field goal here, Rick. We got fourth and uh, about well, one and a half. We went fourth and seven. Why not? <laughs> this is nothing. So we'll see what we have. Your whole arsenal's available to you for two yards. Now Frank in the pistol. Stack Will Abbott in motion. Screen, and, and no, it's not, no. Unfortunately, that's uh, fourth down. We turn the ball over and downs at the 15 yard line. So with 19 seconds left in the third quarter, Hollison takes over at the 15, first and 10. You know what, I guess that was a screen, but that was to Lindquist. Usually you'll see the screens to the running backs, but um, that was to your slot receiver. Um, regardless if it was a screen or not, they had pressure quickly. Um, so that's a big stop for Holliston. It is, and with a, in a two point game, um, the good thing is that that war set, if they come out, no, and they're not going to, they're going to be out spread with three receivers to the right. Benko in the shotgun. And I don't know who has the ball. Uh, number 32. Number 32, Dylan Ibbotson. Did he, did he have the ball in the middle of the... Yeah, it looked like Gibbonson had it. Um, and he was defensive stuck. line made nice pressure there. Yeah, and, he stopped uh, at the line of scrimmage, so he didn't get anything. Yeah. So we have a uh, – boy, we got a Saban burner here, Don. Love um, it. It's 10 to 8 as we head into the fourth quarter. The Hiller is leading the Hollis and Panthers by two. As we bring it upfield, it will be second and 10 for Holliston. So Don, you you alluded earlier about this 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 buy, and it looks kind of interesting that as we look at the records, Hollison has played one less game than everybody in the TVL large. With the playoffs start next week, I, I don't exactly know how that works. Um, well, I, I again, we've just uh, you know we're speaking to some folks before the game who seem to be in the know, and um, I guess they had Nadek on their schedule initially, and they took them off um, for reasons, you know, to, I, whether it was to give them a week to prepare for Hopkinton, whether it was um, to give them a better chance, you know, not to have a loss. I guess they had scrimmaged Natick, and Natick beat them pretty well in the preseason, and the Holliston coaching staff um, figured it would be better to just take a bye or take a loss than play the game. Um, you know, how you – deny an 18-year-old kid the chance to put on a football helmet. 
Uh, I have no idea, but um, you know, it doesn't make any sense. But that's uh, kind of the way they operate over there. So we got a roll out by Banco. He's throwing. Wow, I didn't know he had an arm like that. He threw that ball in the run. He threw it almost 55 yards down the line to. I can't see the number over there. He was double covered by Abbott and looks like Cooney. Yeah, Abbott and Cooney were running right with him. Um, and he did uh, uncork a nice throw there, but it was well covered. And it's going to set up third and about 11. So that sets us up. All in third and 11. 10.53 to go in the fourth quarter. It's been a pretty exciting game, even though it's only 10 to 8. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really been back and forth. Um, you know, I, Hopkinton seems to be controlling the play a little bit, but for the most part, it's pretty even. Well, pressure's on. He rolls out, and he can't get – he throws it. Oh, that should be grounding, right? Oh, yeah, no, no, there. actually, number eight sitting over there. Okay. I thought it was a guy further down. Big stop by the Hillers That's right big. there. Yep. So it brings up fourth and 11 from the from the 14 yard line. Nice to see the uh, the defense step up there after giving up that long bomb uh, it, uh, in the third quarter to get this game close. The defense kind of responded, um, was real aggressive to the ball, and Holliston really kind of worked backwards that whole drive. Yeah, you don't want the uh, don't want to punt this to number two. I don't know how he's going to handle this, but uh, and he's going to get it. Yeah, no, he let it drop. Oh, oh he caught that. He probably should have caught that. That's going all the way down to the 25-yard line. That's a 50. That's almost a 60-yard punt on, and changes the field position. Yeah, it looked like. Looked like Will had that. I thought he was going to make a play on it. And then in the last second, he let it drop, and uh, it took a fortunate bounce for Holliston. And um, that looks like it cost us a good 15, 20 yards. Well, the, I noticed the quarterback. He doesn't kick it. Um, he doesn't. He kicks it almost like he's kicking a loaf of bread, lengthwise. Not, yeah. Right. Um, right. Right. Not narrow wise, and it's kind of a. It might look funny in the air. You know, it's that that waffling kind of kick, and that's those not necessarily easy to catch. So we got a trip stack right. And now he's looking deep to Ionelli, but he overthrows him. There was contact along the, um, along the route. Number one looked like he was kind of playing handsy with Ionelli, um, but he wasn't open. Uh, and I think Ryan just kind of threw it the only place where you could there. Yeah, I kind of like the way the call in the game, Don. It doesn't look like there's going to be any any tic-tac kind of thing or anything that's going to influence this game. No, the refs are keeping the flags in the pockets, which is nice to see. Um, and, uh, you know, the, for the most part, I've seen a little bit of a little bit of shoving here and there by the players, but everyone's kind of keeping in line here. So second and 10, 10, 26 to go. Empty backfield. Trips left. And that's a quick pass to... And he's going to get a first down. He's going to be close to a first. I guess it's going to be Linquist. That's going to be a first down, though. Oh, yeah, Matt Linquist, yep. Picked up uh, four on his own, or four with a lot of traffic to get the first down. Well, Linquist kind of plays that, uh, that slot receiver position like he does uh, linebacker position. He just kind of <laughs> pounds away in there, <laughs> and uh, he got himself a first down. So first and 10, under 10 minutes now in the fourth quarter. Ebert in the pistol, and they got a and he's going to try to get the corner, and he is not going to get the corner. He may be get to the line of scrimmage. Tackled by number three. Nash, Nash is going to be a pretty quick kid because I see him in a lot of a lot of these plays to the uh, to the outside. Yeah, this I mean, without seeing the Medfield game and the Wayland game, which are the two games that were the close games, this is the only team that I've seen that has been able to run with the Hillers. Yeah. Nobody else has been able to run with us. Not only Abbott, nobody's been able to run with him. Right. But just as a team, we have clearly looked faster than the other teams we've played. 
with the exception of this game here. It seems to be about more even. So empty backfield, trips right. Abbott back, and he's throwing down the season. Oh, he had him, but he threw it. He, uh, Linquist had cut to the inside, and he threw it to the outside. I don't know if there was a miscommunication or it was just a, a missed throw. I don't know, but that was about the first time that I've seen a Hiller receiver get behind the Hop the uh, Holliston defense there, but uh, the uh, we weren't able to convert that opportunity. Okay, so it brings up third and about 11. As Ebert lost one on that previous carry. So this is a, this is a big down. Stops the clock at 9.40. Yeah, you wouldn't figure this is two-down territory here. So. I wouldn't think so. No. But this is a strange formation because they must have tight ends in here. I don't. Oh, and he's got. Oh, oh, just over Ionelli, who was running with, who was running with number five, Jake Armstrong, but it's just off his fingertips. Yeah, Ryan, uh, <clears throat> Ryan kind of held in there. The, the offensive line has shored things up as far as protecting him. Uh, he had time to throw, and uh, you know, he, it's a little. You know, this is the first game that I've seen him miss. You know, passes. Well, to be honest with you, he, he had somebody on his heels. Yeah, he may not. Yeah, oh, he, to, he may he not got able hit. to see him. Yeah, he got hit. Uh, and he does a great job standing in there. I mean, he shows no fear. Um, oh, and this is a bit of a shank. It's going to land way. somewhere around the – oh, and it bounces back at oh, the – What's that kid doing? <laughs> Take it easy, buddy. Let it bounce. Uh, he had to go get it, number 74. Had to go ba back and get it, number 74 oh, yeah, being Ben Powers. No, no, he had to go yeah, get no, it. Yeah, no, he did. He was doing <laughs> the right thing. That yeah. Was, um, was, that ball bounced yeah, 10 yeah, yards back. So – Hollison That's will the first take bad over. bounce we've gotten. <laughs> well, they tend to equal out over a game, don't mm, they? Yes, they do. All right, Boy. so Hiller defense got to step up here, coach. You got it there at the 40, 46 yard line. This is good field position. So the field position has swung uh, since the Hollison had oh, moved the ball back. Since the uh, Hollison had the ball at the 15 yard line a couple of possessions ago. So. 9.23 done. This is a, a good step up time for the defense. And Holson looks like they got a lot of players out there. <laughs> They're all bunched together in the war set. And this is a new player here, number 27. Was it number 27, Benson Tristan? Little freshman. Hey, he was quick. They he got him the ball. Yeah. And out of that war set, and he um, he looked like he had something going there, but Abbott came up and made a nice tackle. Well, that's that's part of the that's part of the problem when you go left and right or east and west. It, yeah, if you can't turn it up. Um. <laughs> you can't. Um. So it's second and eight. And the head coach, Kylie, offensive coordinator, signaling the. This is a whole other language almost learning these things. Reverse. Reverse. And he cuts up the middle and he gets to the 40 yard line. It's going to be third and about three. Long, long three. Hiller's showing nice pursuit there. The middle linebacker, Farina, was not fooled by the reverse. And he came up uh, along with Ionelli and made a nice stop. Again, the Hillers do a great job pursuing to the ball with more than one person. Well, we've watched this war set now since you know our kids were playing, so you, you see it enough. You 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 got to just stay at home with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You do. You have to control your gaps. Benko takes off up the middle, and he. Gets the first down, and he slides past the tackle of Ionelli, and he gets down to the 25-yard line. 
Yeah, Cousins, I thought Cousins had him there. He did a nice job stepping up, and then he's shown some speed, which we've seen a little bit out of this quarterback. He can certainly tuck it and run, which most Hollison quarterbacks well, can. You know, Hollison's had this year of running quarterbacks, no doubt. Um, so he did, they scrambled out of there, and uh, then there was a missed tackle in the uh, defensive backfield, and next thing you know, now the now we're uh, 25, 26 yard line, first well, down. And this is where you know, you know how I said, well, you're going for two. What does that mean at that point in the game? And well, we're getting to it, right? Yeah. Well, every point counts. So they get a pistol. He gets out of the pistol. Wide receiver, three wide receivers to the right. Benko throws over the middle. Oh, and instead of trying to catch that, he should have just slid and taken it. Number six, Kevin Quinn. Tried to pick it off his shoes versus sliding and catching that ball, Don. Yeah, you know, I don't know if um, that's certainly what he should have done. I don't know if the quarterback was looks like he it was a good throw because that almost was the only place you could have thrown it there. Because uh, if you threw it too high, I think the Hopkinton kids could have broken on that. Um, but it uh, didn't look like that kid wanted to get his uniform dirty, right? <laughs> I don't know well, what the story be, was there. Could, could be instructions from his mother. <laughs> You're playing could, on a grass be. field. I don't you know, want you they're on They're wearing it. white, you right? know. So... It's second and 10, 7.54 left. Benko out of the shotgun, and somebody moved. I, 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 was it number eight? Must have, somebody in the backfield, yeah. And well, you, I, well, he stepped up. The, he just came out of the uh, formation. I think it was number eight in the slot. The Hillers saw it, I can tell you that yeah, much. They you know, four three or five, of them, three yeah. of them just kind of pointing at him, so it had to be on that side. That's, you know, when, you, when you're having trouble picking up chunks of yards, that's the kind of things that just kill you. Well, I'd like to see the penalties because I would say it was certainly more on the Holston getting penalized than it, it is Hopkinton. Absolutely. Hopkinton has not made a lot of mistakes tonight. No. No. So here we go. It's, we'll call it second and 14. Uh, second and 15, it should be. Banco rolls to his right, and he throws. He lost. Somebody was open. He just missed them. Number eight. It was number eight. Uh, Brad Seymour was open on that. I want to shore that up a little bit. He just overthrew him. Yeah, again, Cousins and McDonald looked like they had some pressure on him, made him roll out to the right. He threw it, and he just kind of sailed it. So we got third and eight, and you've got to figure this would be two down territory if I was. Uh, oh, we got third and 15. Oh, yeah, third and 15. Oh, yeah, there and we go. From the 30, 31 yard line. Yeah, you're in no man's land, I guess. Right, punting it's really not going to do you much, and you got to. Um, we're in the shot. Oh, he dropped the ball. Well, that's the second or third time that's happened today. I think he's taking his eye off the ball and trying to run and get to a certain spot. Yeah, well, there's, you know, they, they like to create movement right off the snap, and uh, it, it seems like that is costing them. I was, I was actually watching the left tackle lined up with uh, number 24 um, from us, Matt Brown. Um, they were talking about him being a good player, and I just watched him to me. Looked like Brown handled him on that play. So an interesting call. There's not too many in the playbook for fourth and 16. You are at the 30, 33 yard line. So you might almost want to throw this into the end zone. What the heck? I live. Call that fly, he moved. And he just, he just heaves it, and it's... Oh. Will Abbott came up. If he could have got something on it, number eight, Seymour was open, but uh, Will Abbott was able to close and knock it away. I'll tell you, I didn't mean to mumble during the play, but the left tackle moved on that play. That should have been a procedure. Secondly, 51 had put pressure on. The quarterback did a nice job stepping up. I thought he was going to complete it, but boy, did Will Abbott close on that play, Rick, and made yeah. a heck of a, a heck of a play to to knock that ball away. So we have, uh, well, that's a big stop, right? I mean, that's uh, this is this is how it has to happen. Holliston kind of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit, but 
You got, uh, is that Ebert in the backfield with yeah. Kelleher? Mm -hmm. And he's going to take it. He took it up the middle, but bounces it to the outside and gets the corner and picks up about eight. Well, this is going to be a situation that we're going to want to watch here, Rick, because the Hiller offense has, they're not only really not built for it, but they haven't had the necessity to kind of ground and pound. Right. You know? Right. So, and they're going to really, you know, I would think that we're not going to want to throw the ball much here. Uh, I'm going to try and take some time and take some chunks of yardage on the ground, and let's see if the, uh, if the line and the running back can, uh, are up to the task. Two receivers to each side, and it's a handoff to Kelleher, who does the same thing, but loses three or at least two, maybe three. So it's going to bring up a third and five-ish. Third and four. Um, the um, yeah, that was a loss of four. Uh, Connor wasn't able to get to the outside there. Um, again, it doesn't look like we're trying to do much uh, up the middle. Um, so now we got third and long three. three. Now this could be kind of a pass run situation. What do we have in the backfield there? Who's that's the, Ebert? I see no, but who's in front of him? Oh, Lindquist. Lindquist. He's going to throw, and he's got. Oh, oh, he, he caught it. Oh, I thought that was picked. Yeah, number three jumped on it. I did too. And uh, Will did a great job staying focused on that ball. That was a nice throw. Almost a great play by the Halston kid. And Abbott, uh, Abbott with great concentration, was able to haul that in for a huge first down. That is a big first down. So it brings us to the 45-yard line. Did you see who was defending that? Was that five or I th three? I, th I thought it was three. The little Nash kid. He's pretty quick, but the ball got through him. And like you said, Abbott made a nice catch, staying focused on the ball. I think it surprised him a little bit because he, I thought he was going to, once he caught it, I thought he'd be gone. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a great play. Neat playmakers. And Kelleher keeps it. And he somebody came up from Holliston. They saw that, number 52. Number 52 being... Brendan Federson. Yeah, that play was uh, that play was funny. That looked like it was one of those read options. Yeah. And Kelleher, Kelleher <laughs> had it in wanted. Frank. Was it gonna, no, it oh, wasn't. No, it was Frank. Frank. Frank, I'm going to keep Frank's this. Frank's like, oh, God, I'm right. I got this carry. And, and, and Kelleher <laughs> said, uh, no, I'll keep this here. Uh, that gets dangerous, though. That's how you fumble the ball. <laughs> well, you can't be fighting over it. That's for darn sure. <laughs> Second down. Second and about six. Pick up a four on the plate. Back to pass. He's throwing deep over the middle. He's got Linquist, and it's long. Two guys running with him. Ryan stood in there tough. Uh, Frank threw a nice block to give him another second there. And uh, again, Rick, you know we're not. We haven't seen a ball go deep where there hasn't been two or three white jerseys yeah, down there and covering that's, it. And that's how you do, right? That's how you defend it. That's how you keep ten points on the board. I'd like to see the clock moving a little more here, but uh, we got third and six. Maybe a. A screen, Rick, or yeah. something to We're maybe find out try and get some yardage, but keep the clock running. We don't want it to stop necessarily. Dan, I could land this plane on the Hudson Sullivan. See what it comes <laughs> up with, right? There we go. All right, here we let's set it. We got uh, Frank in the pistol. He'll probably move up and Linquist in that formation. It's going to be a roll right. He's going to throw. No, he's going to be tackled. And he's not going to get the first down. So it's going to be fourth down right near the line of scrimmage. So it'll be about fourth and five. Ryan did a nice job breaking some tackles there. He had uh, looked like 54 came in, tried to tackle his shoulder pads. Ryan kind of twisted and got another yard or so out of it. But, um, you know, Halston's going to get the ball back here with uh, 425 left. Let's see if Brendan can pin him back with a nice punt. He doesn't need to have a – doesn't need a blazing punt. At the kicking from the 41 yard line. Ooh, bad snap. And a nice kick. And he fumbled it, but it's down at the four yard line. So with 4.04 to go in the fourth quarter, Hollison's got a tall task in front of him. They got to march 90. Six yards for the touchdown. They only need a field goal, so something just short of that would work. But uh, 
Dawn, they haven't done it all, all game. I don't know about all season, but they haven't done it all game. And I got to figure out our defense is up to the task. Well, let, let's hope so. But just back to that, that play there, Rick. It was a low snap. And Kelly uh, did a nice job staying calm, made a nice punt. I, you know, the kid fair caught it. I don't know why he's catching that ball. I mean, I'm glad he did. <laughs> but you just got to let that thing bounce and go in the end zone. I, I don't, you know. But here we go. We got uh, inside the four-yard line. Four yard line. This is uh, I, I see a pick for six or how about a fumble touchdown? That, that works for me. Well, I don't know what kind of crystal ball you got, but I like it. So this takes Hollison out of that war set, and they have to do come up with something to get their uh, offense down the field. So oh, he, he was open. I don't know if he was open. Abbott was in a trail position um, running with him, but he had to throw it across. Yeah, it kind of rolled to his left and threw back across his body. Um, Abbott was there. It would have taking a perfect pass and catch for it to uh, to happen there. That was number six in the pattern, Kevin Quinn. So that brings up second and 10 from the four yard line. 3.58 to go in the game. It's been a an exciting game, even though not a lot of offense, enough offense and some good defensive plays on both sides. Mm -hmm. Benko runs. Oh, he's safety. We got a safety. I don't see a call yet, though. There it is, a safety on the play. That's great. They did put a little pressure on Connor Hebert, came from his cornerback spot, and, uh, and, and just wrapped him up for a safety. That's huge right there. And the best thing is they, uh, they don't get the ball back. So uh, it's going to be a safety. Did you see who wrapped him up, Don? Yeah, I think it was Connor Hebert, number 23. I mean, that's unofficial, Rick. But, well, we'll uh, give it to him. Good. What the heck? Yeah, it looked like he came up from the cornerback spot and uh, and made that play. So there we go. So that's going to um, give us a little breathing room. Going to get the ball back now with 352. So try and get a one first down, maybe two, and uh, let's, let's call this a night. How about it? Yeah. Uh, might need more than that with all the timeouts that we have here. But uh, it's um, – it's already been a long game. It's already 10 after 9. Well, the end of that first half seemed like it went on forever. So we'll give Hebert the safety. It brings us to 12 to 8. Very strange score. And <laughs> so they like a, almost a Sounds like a Yankee. high scoring baseball game. Astros a Yankee, yeah. Astros Yankee game. So uh, Holliston will elect to punt, which is usually the case. Nope, they're not. They're going to kick it. Let's see what they can do to get the ball downfield. How gutsy would it be to do an onside kick? <laughs> it's got, you got to consider it. Nope. And Abbott's not going to catch it. And when he got it on that nice bounce. Ooh, he got smoked. Got smoked by number 44. He was taking a, his, his, his twists and turns on the sideline. Number 44, Connor Mulvaney. That's a dangerous play because when you spin and you get hit like that, you can you can lose the ball. Yep, and and your head. <laughs> but uh, no, Will Will fielded that ball. He was, looked like he had played a little little league back in his day, and he fielded it on one hop and took it up here. He had a nice block out here to kind of squeeze him past the 50-yard line. And uh, like you said, Rick, he took a took a hard hit there, but he he's up and he's back in the huddle, and we have 3:44 left, first and ten. Maybe, how about a shot to the end zone here? I don't think so. I think you, I want you to run it. I don't know if they will, but a uh, uh, quick pitch out there to Hebert, and he cuts it back in, and he was that a face pass? Nah. No. No. So he lost two. But this is okay because if they, if they, here's, here's my philosophy to this based on what just happened, right? Mm -hmm. They punted the ball from the 41 yard line last series, right? So if you don't think they can go 80 yards in four minutes and something, make them use their timeouts, get the ball deep, 
and you stay consistent with your philosophy. Well, I, I'm, I'm totally fine with them trying to run the clock out here. You know, I was just uh, trying to get in Sully's head there. Maybe I figured <laughs> Sully would run a bomb because I'm talking, calling bomb up here. But I would have only done that on first down, right? Not that anybody cares what we're doing because, again, we're retired. We're up here for a reason. Um, but, no, at this point now, you you, you know, you want to take time off the clock. I think that was Holliston's. Maybe we should try and keep track of that. That's Holliston's uh, first I, time out. I don't think it is. That's the, th that's the thing. I don't think it is the first time out. But, yeah, we're up here because we got faces for radio. That's for sure. So we got uh, wide receivers to two. Two wide receivers to each side. Kelleher, he's going to throw. And he's looking. It's going to be over his head. Who was intended for Cooney? So 325 to go. We got uh, game day coordinator Scotty Mackins made his way into the booth. I'll tell you what. Nobody likes beating Holliston more than Scotty. Nobody. So with the incomplete pass, it's... Going to be third and about 12, 13. Let's see, there's a pass, Rick. You know, it's stopping the clock. You know, that yeah, not, yeah. you know. But, yeah, yeah. you know, now you're in a, here's a situation where you want to run a play to try and get 10 yards, but it's got to be a safe type of pass that you yeah. know is going to be able to be completed and yeah. the clock's not going to stop. So we got uh, trip stack to the right. Frank is in there with Kelleher, and he's rolling. And he's going to get, he throws the ball. Was, I don't know if it was caught. I don't uh, see anybody. Nope, no, incomplete. Incomplete. And number 21, Dwayne Fay was on the heels of uh, Mr. Kelleher, and he got rid of it. Incomplete, though, fourth and 13. Kelly's out to... What you're not happy about is you gave him the ball back <laughs> well, <that's, laughs> with, uh, yeah. you know, about three minutes to go. And that's a, a decent kick. Nobody's back there to receive it for Hall. Oh, no, it's at the 20. Oh, a 20-yard kick. So, boy, that gives a... Some confusion on the field here. Looks like there's a timeout. Coach Gerard is. The official's coming over here. I think he's looking at you for the. I better not be looking at me, Rick. Yeah. 314. That's about where I saw it. So 314 to go in the fourth quarter. Well, I'll tell you, well, one thing we don't want is to get anybody behind our defense. Like, that's the only that's the only way they've been able to move the ball is really yeah. on that one. You know, they've gotten some couple first downs here and there, but they've had no consistent. And Benko's rolling, and he's running, and he throws the ball. And missed tackles, and I don't know if he got out of bounds. Oh, he's still going. Did he get out of bounds? He picked up about six in the play. I don't know who he threw it to, but did he get out of bounds? Yeah. Or yeah, he got, time with, yeah, that was a nice play by whoever caught it. I, I want to say it was number five. It could yeah, have been he, Jake Armstrong. He went up and grabbed it, um, and then there was a missed tackle, kind of kind of trying to tackle high there. And then um, kid, kid, made, kid made a nice play and got out of bounds. So it was positive yardage. Both of these quarterbacks, both Kelleher and Penko, uh, Penko um, can move with the ball and throw. They can throw on the run, both these boys. Penko uh, will not be back next year as a senior. Kelleher will be. And he's flushed out of the, oh, nice move. Nice move, and he's gonna run, and he's gonna get smoked from behind, gets back to about the line of scrimmage, number 51. It's Cousins. Which Cous is Cousins on the, on the tackle, and we've got which that's a nice that's a nice play from a defensive tackle position to kind of stay with the play and chase the quarterback down and ch you know tackle him seven yards down the field. Yeah, you're not giving up on the play. No, right. Nope. Your mode is going and you're not becoming a spectator at any point. But that was a nice spin move he had to get out of there. 
Um, looked it, like he was going to have some 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 yards, but it, it closed down pretty quick. Yeah, 24. Uh, Matt Brown made a nice move, or he got around the left tackle there and applied the pressure, and um, and uh, the, the Holston quarterback made a nice spin move. You know, you got to watch too when when a quarterback buys that kind of time. You always got to look for somebody kind of drifting behind the defense. Mm -hmm. I looked at, for that because I kind of made a quick look down. Looked like our safety was right on it, and uh, everyone again has stayed in position, which is something this Hiller defense has done all year, all year long. You know, they do not roam. It's like a rock concert here. <laughs> <laughs> so a long time out, Hallison. There's no giving the ball back. You're going to have to go for it. It's at some point, if you get the fourth down. So they got trips. And he's back to pass, and he's out of the, oh, he's got sacked back at the, back at the 15 yard line. So it's fourth and about, it's going to be fourth and a long ways. Hebert on the sack, Don. Yeah, Hebert looked like he came in from the cornerback spot. You also had 24 Brown, again, getting around that uh, that left offensive tackle who's not moving his feet um, and applied the pressure. Quarterback had no no chance, and uh, that, was, uh, that, that's, that could be the, uh, the nail in the coffin right there, Rick. That's a huge play. Certainly could be. So it's fourth and 16. 240 left in the fourth quarter. Hopefully the game. I don't, it's going to be tough to tie it at this point. You have to win it or lose it. Yeah, I don't think I don't think we have overtime in our contract, do we, Rick? Uh, well, you know, it'll have to, I'll have to put it in with my raise. Um, so uh, are you punting here, or are you going to go for uh, it? You got to go for it. You may not get the ball back. No, well, you got three you, timeouts left. I mean, you're uh, fourth and sixteen. You're. I don't know. I, I might kick it and try and try and stop them and at least change the field position here. I I don't know. It's gonna be interesting here. Hillers are applying some really really nice pressure on the quarterback though. So whatever they do, they're not gonna have a lot of time to do it. Well, he may not be rushing. You know. Well, it looks like they're gonna bring him. Get a lot of people up tight to the line of scrimmage. You better throw it soon. Oh, he's not going to get the first down, is he? No. He does not get the first down. But he came close. Ionelli with the tackle around the 26-yard line. Yeah, again, flushed out of the pocket by Brown. Um, and then, he, you know, he was close to the first down. But, you know, you're, that's going to be a difficult play to make if uh, – with the Hiller speed that they have on defense. So you're not going to outrun the Hiller defense. There's no, too many fast players there. But all he needed was to make one guy miss there. He was dangerously close to getting that first down. Um, so, you know, at 230 left, you still got to get a first down here, Don. And I am guess there's no, uh, no throwing the ball at this point. So Holliston Hopkinton with Ebert in the backfield, and he Ooh. and he, he squeezed out of that That's barely a, a, again with that read option not going too smooth. Yeah, uh, the read the read option was not did not go smooth there. It looked like we almost had movement on our line. They don't they didn't call that, and um, that was slow developing. And the Hillers were lucky not to to fumble there. And that's that's what you worry about at this point. You don't need to have that fumble just do let's do a, a quick handoff and let them use their timeouts right again if you didn't think they could get there with four minutes left with all their timeouts you run the ball they're not gonna have any timeouts at under two minutes left so right it, it stays with the philosophy just run the clock if that's what you're going to do but do it in a smart way don't be having these mesh issues that could create the fumble yeah, I mean, you, well, if you're going to run that read option, you better make sure your quarterback and your running back are on the same page as far as who's getting it. Um, 
But I would figure, you know, the Hillers have, again, we've seen some blowouts, but they also have played in a couple tight games here against Medfield, against Whalen, and now this one. These kids, uh, they're a veteran group. Um, they're going to keep their head and uh, hopefully finish this thing out strong. Well, it certainly looks like they're going to finish this out strong. Finish this out strong. You gotta, the crowd is stuck around. Oh, yeah. Will there be a rushing of the field? Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe the kids might. I, I'm, I'm probably just going to yeah, stay You're going to stay here <laughs> and watch for a little bit? <laughs> a jet sweep to Abbott, I'm sure. And he breaks. He gets the corner. Stay in bounds. And he stayed in bounds. But I don't know if he got the first down, but he certainly picked up a chunk of yards. That was a really nice job by Will taking that uh, that jet sweep there and having the wherewithal of knowing, hey, you know what, I want to stay in bounds, let them burn the timeout. That was an excellent job by number two, Will Abbott. So he comes up just a little short of the first down. It's going to be third and one. So 2.06 left in the fourth quarter. You gotta figure that's Hollison's last time out at this point. This is a huge down for them. Well, Hillers still have two downs here. If they, I don't know, I, I have a tough time believing they would go for an extra point. Uh, or I mean a field, field goal. goal. So, um, you know, they're gonna have to stop them twice here. You could run the clock out here with a first down. Is this her last time? Oh, with first down, yes. And then Abbott takes on a jet sweep and doesn't get. And there's a penalty. That that could have been a face mask if oh, the came, way. Came a long ways. Hold. Abbott comes up a little gimpy. But the way he spun around, um, but this looks like it's going back towards the Hillers. Chop block. Okay. 15 yards. All right, I think he gave the chop block. Talking to Ionelli, it just doesn't matter. Just get out of there. Yeah. It's fourth down. Is that loss of down? Personal foul. Right, that's a personal foul, right, chop block? So he's got to take the yards on this, right? Why would you? Well, you might. Uh, if he lost yards, they may make it fourth and two or fourth and three. Yeah, and he, that's, that's that's what he's that's, doing. That's what he's going to do. Yeah, because he doesn't want to give up the time. That's true. He, uh, you know, to run two more plays, you're better off trying to stop him on fourth and four here than on third and 16 i guess and that might they might not have any timeouts rick left this is true we're getting down there they've called a lot of them so he could uh you know say we got to stop them here and i turn into a pumpkin in another half hour just past my bedtime yeah or my you know so the clock's running at 148 so there goes there answers the question of whether Halston had any timeouts left. I know I don't know what's going on. Hopkins Hopkin. calls a timeout. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. that's just smart. I mean, with the, you might as well get this right. I yep. mean, you're in a take some time. You got a four-yard play that you got to come up with, and you leave him. You know, even if you don't get this, you're going to leave him with about a minute, thirty-five minute, minute and a half. I suppose anything can happen in a minute and a half. But well, uh, it's high school football, so, you know, you never know what's going to happen here. Um, you know, you'd like to think that we've got a play that, you know, we know we can get four, four yards, but I don't know what that play is. Uh, it's like Sully's in there. He's got some ideas. One, one thing you want to be careful with the ball here, Rick. You know, you don't want to be throwing an out and have a kid take it, you know, step in front of it for a pick for six or – you don't want to have a slow developing play where, you know, you're going to set yourself up for a possible fumble. Um, like to see one of those just little quick, quick passes like they had a lot of success with in the first half. Yeah, I just say Kelleher, take it straight up, just cover the ball, see what you get. 
Turn it over and down, so what? Right? No, he's, he he's looks like he's going under center here. Oh, no, that's no. Lindquist. That's Lindquist. I'm sorry. That's silly talk. <laughs> <laughs> so Lindquist is up tight. And it's almost picked. See, now you gave him more time, 137. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you didn't get it, it was going to be a stop o'clock anyway on, on change of possession. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So this is going to be, okay, Don. <laughs> it didn't go quite the way we wanted it. Hollison gets the ball back, 137 to go in the fourth quarter, and all the marbles are on the table. I don't see many people that have left the game, so. <laughs> and I look across the field, I see Hollison's whiteout uh, student section getting into it a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, a, this is a, this has been a great high school atmosphere, high school football atmosphere. All right, so let's go. Here we go, D. So Benko in the shotgun. And he's rolling to the right. He has no time and he throws and it's caught. Oh my goodness. It's caught off the tip to the 37 yard line. The clock will stop until they reset the chains. Yeah, they're getting pressure on him. Um, Looks like Cousins and uh, 45. So you only you got two deep. Uh, uh, Hopkins is playing two deep safety. Oh, he's going to get sacked. Where is he? He's, yeah, he got sacked. It's a fumble. I don't think. He never called it down. He never did, and, Ho and Hopkins has it, and that'll do it. There we go. That'll do it. So at 110 in the fourth quarter, Benko fumbles the ball. Yeah, Cousins has been playing like a man all night. He um, he made a nice move, applied pressure. Again, we have two deep safeties, so we're really getting pressure just with our defensive line. Man, I would have liked to have seen that play over again. It, it, nobody seems to be arguing much, but. Oh, it was a fumble. He fu Cousins kind of grabbed them, spun them around. The ball came out, and it was kind of just bouncing over there. Cousins was still had had his hands on the quarterback. They were both kind of fighting to get over there, and then a Hopkinton kid came, slid in, and grabbed it. I didn't see who ended yeah, up I, ultimately recovering I it. Didn't see it over there. But he had a green uniform on, and um, <laughs> I guess that's all that matters. And right? that's all that matters. <laughs> so with one ten to go, I think you can just kneel it. Oh yeah, victory formation, Rick. So this has been. Uh, of course, you can always score too. You know, yeah, we've been on the other end of this uh, scenario, before, <laughs> times before, and you know that team hasn't, uh, you know, let up. Uh, I have a tough time seeing that happening here, though. I would uh, yeah, expect it's, the victory formation. Let's get out of here. It's, it's a quick kneel, and we could almost start talking, Rick. You know, as, as important as this game was, and certainly is, just to win the TVL. I mean, that's a, a great accomplishment by these boys. Um, but, you know, next week's a playoff game now. Now now it starts for real, man. Yeah, and you're going to host that game all, in all likelihood. You would figure. Anyway, we're going we're gonna to count this as a win. We're going to go 7-0. Hollison drops a 3-3. Three three. You are outright TVL large champions. Check. That's what your first, uh, your first um, goal is. Okay, you're in the playoffs. Check. That's your second goal. And now you go try to make some, uh, do some damage in the, uh, in the playoffs. Yeah, and I guess, you know, I can't really even speak of it because we have no idea who will play. Um, that information should probably be out. I don't know if there's any games that are on, going on tomorrow, but they'll usually have it once all the games are settled for the week. Um, you know, the athletic directors will get the information as far as who we're going to play. And, um, you know, it'll be interesting. But, yes, we'll definitely have a home game next week. So uh, I get on a plane tomorrow, head to Germany. I get in on Friday. So I should be coming in just in time to do whatever the game. So you're going to have to do the research and no. get things rocking Sorry. and rolling. No, I got homework? Yeah. All right. So, uh, Let's see what I can do. So it's going to be tough to talk over this crowd with 19 seconds to go. The clock's running. What a terrific game today. The final's going to be 12 to, to 8 in the second quarter. Abbott, shuttle pass from Kelleher, 7-0, 441. In the third quarter, 657. Pack Luclea field goal made it 10 to nothing. In the third, 
Nash from Benko, a 45-yard pass at 439. A two-point conversion made it 10 to 8. And then a safety in the fourth with uh, Connor I don't Hebert. Have, I don't, no, I don't have it on the time. Hebert at the safety. So the final, 12 to 8. The Hoppin' and Hill is outright TVL champions. For Don Lehman, I'm Rick DeSena. Have a good night.